and welcome to the 2020 Alto Young Butcher and Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice Grand Final and for the first time the Pure South Master Butcher of the Year competition. We're coming live to you this evening from the ASB showgrounds and we have 18 of New Zealand's top butchers ready at their workstations to battle it out for those titles. Myself and the team at Retail Meet New Zealand are really pleased to have been able to host the regional competitions, especially given all the challenges that we've had this year, and to bring the grand final to you, even though it's not in its usual format, but by using the technology that we have available to us to bring it to you via a live stream is really exciting and we do hope that you enjoy it. I'm now going to introduce you to our commentators and our judges of the competitions. Starting with Rod Slater from Beef and Lamb New Zealand, Hannah Miller-Childs from A Lady Butcher, Reuben Sharples, a member of the Hella Sharp Blacks team and from Aussie Butcher Newland, Ricky Kerry Kerry, a member of the Hella Sharp Blacks team and from Countdown Meat and Seafood. The judges of the Pure South Master Competition, we've got Head Judge Peter Martin from Fresh Choice Cromwell, Corey Winder, Captain of the Hella Sharp Blacks team and from Elite Meats Bush Inn. The judges for the Anne's Co Foods Butcher Apprentice Competition are Jeremy Garth, a member of the Hella Sharp Blacks team and from New World Ferry Road, and Brian Everton from Cabernet Foods. The judges for the Alto Young Butcher Competition are Elena Epsom from Foodstuffs North Island and Peter Farrelly from Wilson Hallaby. We also have Mark Wiley from the Rolex Group, who is our chef judge this evening. And last but not least, Luca Young, a member of the Hellish Sharp Blacks team and from New World Eastridge, who will be the judge for our five new awards that we have up for grabs this evening. The five new awards include Beef and Lamb New Zealand Best Beef Product, New Zealand Pork Best Pork Product, Teagle Foods Best Chicken Product, and Cabernet Foods Cleanest Bones. We're also awarding the Competence Emerging Talent Award to one of our apprentice butchers. Now we couldn't run this event without the help of our sponsors, so I would like to say a big thank you to our sponsors this evening, Alto, Anne's Co Foods, Pure South, Beef and Lamb New Zealand, Competence, Dunningham's, Hellers, Teagle, Wilson Hallaby, and our award sponsors, Beef and Lamb New Zealand, Cabernet Foods, Competence, New Zealand Pork, and Teagle Foods. Now back to the competition. Now we're going to be doing the cutting test, it's going to start shortly, we're going to run the cutting test from 6 till 8pm and then from 8pm till 9pm we're going to be doing some interviews with our contestants and having a look at their display tables and from 9 to 9.30 we're going to do the awards ceremony. Now if you'd like to chat to us, um, there is a chat function next to the live stream on our webpage, feel free to ask us some questions or do some shout outs to your com favourite competitor and also tag us in your posts, um, hashtag NZ Top Butcher and at Retail Meet NZ. We'll be monitoring our social media channels and you could feature in the watch party. So we're ready in the room now so I'm now going to pass you over to Pippa. Pippa's going to do a countdown for the competition and then we'll hand you over to our competitors starting with Rod who's going to give you an overview of the Pure South Master Butcher competition. We hope that you enjoy the live stream and I'll see you later. Competitors, are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let the games begin. Good luck, everyone. Wow, folks, uh, we're underway, and a big welcome to the, the inaugural Pure South Master Butcher of the Year competition. This competition is reserved for those who have great skill and proficiency in the craft of butchery. It's the big boys. Retail Meat New Zealand introduced this category to give our master butchers a real challenging playing field in the search for the country's top master butcher and to give our young butchers a more level playing field. Competitors of this competition must be qualified butchers 31 years of age and above. And up for grabs, ladies and gentlemen, is 5,000 New Zealand dollars. Uh, the first prize to the winner is three and a half thousand dollars, and the runner-up receives a $1,500 cash prize. Now let's take a look at the six competitors who are competing for this top line award tonight. Martin Hickey, Skills for Work. Brendan Kemp, New World Gore. Delmon Kimiora, Pack and Save Pukekohe, 
Rob Lees, Walk With Butchery. Laura Lua McDonald, Fresh Choice, Mangari Bridge. And Lehi Takira, Evans Bacon Company. The meat cuts have been provided by Pure South, our master sponsors for this event. A whole lamb was sponsored by the Pure South group. Uh, a beef banjo has been supplied by Wilson Hallaby. The Pure South master butchers have free reign to create and do whatever they wish the, with these meat cuts. There are no compulsory cuts. The master butchers competitors are also allowed to be as creative as they want to with their display tables, with everything they do. There are no restrictions. And this competition, so I think it will be a real treat in this competition this evening, and we're looking forward to seeing the end products, that's for sure. However, it's not just about look and display, it's also about other matters of which they will be judged on. Safety, hygiene, speed and efficiency, yield and knife skills, products created, and cookability, and to that end, they will be judged by us, Chef Judge Mark Wiley from the Rolex Group. The two judges for this competition, Head Judge Peter Martin and Corey Winder, Captain of the Hell of Sharp Lex, both have years of experience competing and judging, and I'm sure they will be keeping their marking tight and on point with the contestants. Head Judge Peter Martin was on the first Hellas Sharplax team way back in 2011. He'll be taking a trip down memory lane for sure, and I'm sure he'll be keeping both judges as much as Corey up to speed on this. Corey Winder has been the captain of the team since 2011, and they were on the team together for four years, those two. In the two hours of the cutting test, they must compete all of their garnish displays, meat cutting, and tickets. The contestants have a bandsaw and a mincer available to use, and these have been provided by Dunningham's. The Pure South Master Butcher also have trays available for their displays, thanks to Alto Packaging. Now let's take a look at some of the competitors that we're keeping an eye on for taking out this Pure South Master Butcher of the Year title. First up, Marty Hickey. Marty has been in the butcher competition since seen for a few years now and is hungry for this title. We know he's got the makings of this year's winner with his previous experience in the Alto butcher competitions, regionals and two wins in meat stock butcher wars. He's got the skills, he's got the talents, he's got what it takes, but can he produce it on the night? We shall just see how we progress. Dalmon Kimiori, you've just seen him. Dalmon is regarded as a bit of a wild card in this competition, a bit of an unknown, an underdog, if you will. Even though Dalmon is new to this competition, we've heard some we've had reliable intel that Dalmon is a very, very talented butcher. Evidenced by his fourth placing in last year's meat stock competition. He's definitely going to be one to watch. Smart money on taking the title, so some say. And now it's a great pleasure that I queue across to our wonderful, wonderful host out on the floor, Ricky Kirikiri. Kia ora, Ricky. Yeah, kia ora, koutou, no my hide my welcome whanau. Uh, here we are at the uh, Nationals watching our uh, great competitors. Right now I'm standing in front of Lehi Takiri. He's from Gisborne, my hometown, Mahaki Te Iwi. I'm sure the whanau are out there uh, supporting you, brother. He looks a bit nervous, but he's getting on with it. Looking good, bro. Keep it up. Uh, here we are at Lua McDonald. Uh, Lua's an old apprentice of mine. Uh, now he's a butcher and uh, he's doing well, so I'm glad to see him here. Uh, looking good. Sweats up, mate. 
Just the usual? Feeling good? No, oh, you're good, good. Apart from the sweet. That's all right. You're doing well, mate. Right now, he's boning out his uh, blade. He's got his blade bone coming out. Um, and we'll see a lot more action coming up soon. We'll be coming back shortly. Next, we have uh, Brendan Kemp. Uh, young Brendan from Gore, all the way from the South Island. Here he is. He's, he's smashing out his uh, blade at the moment. Doing a great job too, by the way. So these guys, you know, they'll be pretty nervous. Uh, the start, uh, this is where you feel all the, the, the nerves set in and they start kicking in, but eventually you start to um, gain control. And look at them, look at that. These guys are artists, they're not just butchers, they're absolute artists. Good work, Brendan, keep it up, mate, going well. Go over to uh, Delmon, Aitutaki, Cook Island, proud brother, kia ora ana. The two I see at New World, oh, sorry. He's a butcher at Pack and Save in Pukakui. Here he is, he's doing his lamb at the moment. Into the lamb leg. Rolling the strings around, looking good. Looks like he's got some double loin chops sitting there on the tray. Getting his garnishing out right now. Looks relaxed. <laughs> Here he goes, gonna put some garnishes on his lamb. So, um, you know, stick with us. You're going to see some amazing displays coming up. Um, we're only at the start, but uh, if you keep on watching, you're going to see some displays that will blow your mind. Again, like I said, these guys are absolute artists. Looking good, mate. Keep it up. There you go, all you people watching. If you uh, walk into your butcher shop, you see all this stuff, you can actually see how they do it. It's pretty good. Good creation. Moving along. Marty Hickey. He's a trainer. Absolute legend in our uh, industry. Looking a little bit nervous. Looking good, mate. Take it easy. Smile on your face. That's it. That's the Marty we know. Hey, Ricky, if he's going to start cooking us up a feed, can I just order some of that bacon that he's got there? <laughs> Looking good. Ricky, you're on the shop floor down there. How's the tension feel? What's it feel like to you? Um, well, looking at the master butchers, they're not too bad. They look relaxed, most of them. Um, obviously, as we get around to the uh, apprentices and the young butchers, that might change because um, they'll be nervous uh, and you know we've done these competitions before I know when I've done it uh, I used to absolutely crap my pants it was quite a scary event to get into and and I'm sure all the guys that are here judging the likes of Corey and Jeremy will know exactly what I'm talking about um, so you know it's great to see these guys out here some of them come from small towns and they're, they're out here um, they love what they do they love their trade and they're performing on the stage you know this is great it's great to watch and Ricky, when, you, when you're doing the competition, do you actually keep an eye on what other the people alongside you are doing, your competitors, or is it really just heads down, tail up and going for it? Heads down, mate. Um, I never took notice of anyone next to me. You were too busy freaking out yourself. So um, you, you don't tend to watch what's going on around you. You do get a bit nervous when the judges come up and they start sniffing around, especially Corey. He's pretty hard, old Corey. He doesn't miss anything. Yep. And here we go. We've got Rob Lees. He's from Walkworth Butchery. Doing well, mate, looking good, nice and calm. All you folk that are supporting him uh, at Walkworth, get along and go and support his shop. It's great to see these small butcher shops down here, awesome. Looking good, Rob. Right now he's taking his shin. Yep. Looking good. All right, so uh, at the moment, um, the guys are looking pretty good. We'll be seeing some elaborate displays later on, so get ready for it. It's going to be amazing. These guys are absolute awesome artists. I'm running out of words to say, so I'll try not to repeat myself. Bear with me. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> back to Hannah and uh, introduce our Ansco Foods Butchers Apprentice competition. Cheers. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Ricky. Um, really good to see those masters at work. St straight into what it looks like. Wonder what the apprentices are up to. Uh, so this is the 10th year uh, of the Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice Competition. So pretty happy to be celebrating a decade uh, here in 2020. This competition really celebrates the future of the retail meat industry and the lovely young talent that we have coming through. Uh, as well as actually anyone, this competition is open um, to all ages, even though we tend to lean towards young. Uh, enrolled in a butchery apprenticeship, um, and we see first, second, and third year apprentices enter this competition. Uh, as we go through them later on, you will see that uh, difference in what year the apprentice they are. Uh, we've had over 40 years enter, sorry, we've had over 40 apprentices enter the regional competitions this year, which is a record high. So out of those 40, there are six finalists today. Uh, so competitions, obviously, was, uh, a lot was at stake. The grand prize for the Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice of the Year is a study tour, uh, a trophy, and a knife, sp knife set sponsored by Victorinox. The runner-up will also receive a $500 Prezi card and also a knife set sponsored by Victor Knox. Now, let's take a look at who the six contestants are. We have James Biddy from Pack and Save Te Aumutu, Maria de Lourdes Pio from Pack and Save Rangi Ora. We have uh, Vichith Ok, Countdown Meat and Seafood, Jaden Sigar, Countdown Central, Jacob Wells, New World Foxton, and Blair Wright, from Peter Tim's Meats. The Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentices have been provided with the following meat cuts. One size 20 chicken from Teagle Foods, an Ansco Foods beef short loin, a whole pork leg, as well as a mystery cut that they were only told 10 minutes ago what it was going to be. Uh, that was announced that it is a lamb forequarter, um, and both of these were provided by Wilson Hellaby. They have complete free reign in this competition, whereas in the regionals they had to have compulsory cuts. In this one, they're allowed to do whatever they like. So creativity has no bounds tonight. Um, but they do have to display them on Alto uh, trays, which are provided. So thank you, Alto, for providing us with those. Um, these apprentices are judged much like the master's competition. Um, they're judged not only on their display and what the, how great the final product looks, but of course on their safety, hygiene, speed, yield, um, and of course, what they've produced, as well as my personal favorite, cookability. The two judges of this competition are Jeremy Garth, a member of the Heller Sharp Blacks, hailing from New World Ferry Road, and Brian Everton from Cabernet Foods. In this two hours, they must complete everything um, for their table, so they must do all their garnish, display, meat cutting, and tickets. They're not allowed to pre-cut anything. They're not allowed to pre-make anything. It all must be done within that two-hour time frame. Um, they've been provided with a bandsaw and a mincer. Uh, those are very nicely provided by Dunningham's um, and very similar to uh, what was provided to them in the regional competitions. Now, let's take a look at some of the competitors that we've been keeping an eye on for taking out the title. First up is Maria de Lourdes Pio. This is Maria's second appearance at the Grand Final. Last year she won the Christchurch Regional, and this year she's in with the wild card, having the next highest score across the country. I also would just like to add, it's quite good to see a woman in there competing. <laughs> uh, Maria has been through the competition's mentorship program and was connected with Corey Winder, captain of the Heller Sharp Blacks. To be her mentor, pretty lucky I reckon, uh, absolutely goes without saying that only good things can come out of being mentored by Corey Winder. I can definitely say that from personal experience. Maria is one to watch. Second up on the list to watch is V. Ok. V won the Upper North Island Regional. I was lucky enough to actually judge that day. Uh, he was fantastic. It was a close call with 14 very talented butcher apprentices. 
Um, but he absolutely ticked all the boxes, so now it's up to see today if he does the same. V is one of the lucky butcher apprentices to have Ricky Carey Carey, a member, also a member of the Hello Sharp Blacks as his mentor, um, also one of our commentators today. Uh, and Ricky has a fantastic passion for mentoring, and there is no doubt that V will have the motivation, skills, and drive to potentially take out the title. Let's cross to Ricky to have a closer look and see what our apprentices are doing. Okay, thank you, Hannah. Um, welcome back. Uh, we're with James at the moment um, from Te Awamutu. Waikato country, he's a staunch Mulu boy. Um, right now he's working on his pork leg. So uh, he's got some garlic butter going on, a bit of bacon out. It's a bit hard to see what he's going to create um, at the moment, but we will see it come together shortly. Looking good, James. He's a beast, isn't he, eh? Look at the size of those arms. That's a butcher for you. Good work, mate. Keep it up. And here we are, we're over at uh, V's table, representing Countdown Meat and Seafood, actually one of my apprentices I've been mentoring, good kid. Um, I have no influence over the judges whatsoever, just for those that are watching, I'm um, just commentating. But he is one of my apprentices yeah. and uh, he's awesome to watch. Yeah. Cool. He, all the way from Cambodia uh, and uh, lives in South Auckland, I love my South Auckland talent. He's an Otara boy where I'm from. Awesome mate, looking good. Hey nice Ricky, I have a question. Yeah. From the commentator table, what what are the judges looking for right now, this early on in the competition? Well, depending on what they're doing, say right now we're looking at V. The judge would be looking at how clean his bones are, uh, the cuts into the meat, making sure he hasn't, you know, cut into this fine premium sirloin steak which we see here. They'll be looking for bone chips, anything like that. Um, it's really about their uh, boning skills because they're really at the start boning the product first and then um, they'll move on to garnishing and slicing, and that's a whole different skill again. And this is probably a time that they're really looking at the safety with the knives and making sure that there is no accidents and things like that that yeah, can be happening? absolutely. For those that are watching at home, you'll see they're wearing uh, mesh gloves, uh, all the safety gear, um, but you know, the, these guys, uh, they know what they're doing, they know their gear, and they're pretty safe with it, but however, you, the nerves get to you, you make a slip up, and that could count against you, but judges are pretty pretty tough on safety. Yeah, and Ricky, Richard's, uh, Richard's got an amazing story from Cambodia. I was fortunate enough to be on the, the panel interviewing these young apprentices this morning, and he came to New Zealand 12 years ago, He and you probably know this, but he could not speak a word of English. Here yes. he is 12 years down the track, competing at the highest end of this, the butchery trade. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he has a great story, uh, and to see what he's done with his life, he, you know, um, we found him by accident to be fair. He was just working on the floor as a labourer. Um, he was interested, applied for the apprenticeship program, and here we are today. So I'm quite proud of that boy, you know. English is his second language, and yet here he is. He's getting interviewed, he's done exams, he's out there showing his skills. Very proud of him. He's, uh, he's a good kid, going to go a long way. Um, right now we're going to go to uh, Maria. And we've seen her skills, she's absolutely awesome. At the moment, she's doing a bit of garnishing. She's done most of her sirloin by the looks of it. Bit of pancetta going on. She's got some beautiful flowers and edible flowers. Great, looking beautiful. In effect, about Maria, um, back in Brazil, she was actually a number cruncher. I believe Beside she... pushing numbers, she's come to cutting up meat. Yeah, pretty good, eh? Look at that, we're watching it now. We do have a couple of shout outs for Maria here that have come through. Um, shout out to her nephew, Igor, um, and also Amanda, who's a very dear friend. Watching from Brazil. Watching from Brazil. Well, how cool is that, eh? Watching all the way from Brazil. Here we are in Auckland. Aotearoa, that is so awesome. Going great, Maria, keep it up. Table's looking great. Good girl. Moving along now, we're with Jacob, Jacob Wells. New World Foxton, he's into his pork leg at the moment, trimming up his pork rump. Looking good there, mate. At the moment, he's got a nice big pork roll sitting on his table, ready for displaying. And he's got a stellar of a moulet hanging off the back there, too. Yes, uh, he's got one of those incredible haircuts that you used to have, um, Ruben. <laughs> Bit of a hairnet, maybe, it looks like. Yeah, it is a hairnet at the moment, holding That's his good. mullet in. That's the only way you're going to catch a mullet. They don't usually <laughs> take the bait and hook. But what a cool story, eh? Jacob, all the way from New World Fox in the middle of the North Island, 
Here he is in Auckland competing at the National Champs. Great work, mate. Good to see you here. Keep it up. We'll, we'll be coming back to the action shortly. And over to Blair Wright. As you can see, he's doing a bit of knocking around there. Got the old mallet going. Maybe he's making some schnitzel. Could be some olives. Don't know yet. We'll see what comes out of this. Blair Blair's 18 years of age, Ricky. By far the youngest competitor here today. Yeah, yeah he's a good kid. And um, obviously he comes from a great butcher shop too under Peter and David. So um, looking good. He'd be someone to watch out for. And here we go, Jaden Seagar, Countdown Central, another Countdown boy. You know, countdown hard, he reckons. Yeah, I'll go with that one. All right, here he goes. He's trimming up his pork leg. Getting a bit of trim off there. Looks like he's making either schnitzel, could be olives, could be anything. We don't know yet. Anyway, keep it up. You're going well, Jaden. We'll be back to you shortly. Back to Ruben uh, to introduce the Alto Young Butchers competition. Thanks there for Ricky. The Alto Young Butcher of the Year has been running in various forms for three decades and is a prestigious event, well regarded by the retail meat trade. This year, the retail this year the retail meat um, introduced the competition as a Young Butcher of the Year in an effort to get our young butchers back in the game of competing more of a level playing field. I was fortunate enough when they changed the rules to take this out when it was opened up to the older ducks. <clears throat> Contestants for this competition have been qualified, must be qualified and under 30 years of age now. The grand prize for this, if they can take it out, will be the Young Butcher of the Year trophy, a study tour and a knife set from Rickshinox. The runner-up will receive a $500 Prezi card and also an awesome knife set from Rickshinox. Now let's take a look at those six contestants. We have Cameron Fletcher here from New World Hanswell, Brad Gillespie from New World Rotatuna, um, Braden Pink from Evans Bacon in, um, down the line, James Smith from Pukekohe Pack and Save, Samantha Weller from Pack and Save Rangiora, and Taylor Willey from New World Gardens. The young butchers will be provided the same cuts as the apprentices, which is a number 20 chicken from Teagle, a beef short loin, thanks to Ansco Foods, and the whole pork leg and mystery cut from Wilson Hillabies. Our contestants only found out about the mystery cut 10 minutes ago, so they're going to be racking their brain on what sort of things they can do with that, from garnishes to the cuts and that they'll require. They have free reign to create whatever they would like, but unlike the pure, sharp, uh, the pure self master butchers, they have to put this all on a flat, not elevated trays using the Alto trays sponsored for this competition. The Alto young butchers are judged not only on their display, but also on safety, hygiene, speed, and speed knife and yield skills, products produced, and the cookability of all these. The two judges for the competition are Peter Farrelly from Wilson Hallabies and Elena Morrison from Foodstuffs New World, um, North Island. Peter has judged um, this many um, times and Elena, this is the first time judging, but she has definitely been in the spotlight taking out the competition in 2015 and also the Young World Butcher in 2016. In the two hours of this cutting test, they must compete all their garnishing and meat cutting cutting and tickets. They cannot start this before the time started. Contestants are not allowed to pre-cut anything. They are given a bandsaw, a mincer, to be used for this, and if they would like to make sausages, they have to bring in their own sausage filler. Thanks to Dunningham's for supplying all the equipment in the grand final and also in the regions. Now let's take a look at the competitors, keeping an eye on for the young butcher of the year. First up we have Sam has been a butcher in the competition circuit since 2016. In this time she has competed in five regionals 
three grand finals, which led her to being selected for the ANSCO Young Food Butcher to compete in 2018. The competition was held in Ireland, and I was lucky enough to be there watching her, and she is definitely one to take out this title today. A second to watch is James Smith. James is also known as the Tattooed Butcher and has been competing since 2012. In the last nine years, James has managed to take out um, three regionals oh, and one North Island South. He was also a big lineup in the Meat Stock Butcher Wars five times. In 2019, James was selected as a Hella Sharplex and we know he's got the passion and talent and skills to be selected for this. So James is definitely in the running tonight. The third on the list is Brad Gillespie. Brad has been competing for the last four years and he's made himself known as a serious competitor by winning the runner-up title last year. Brad has also been showing off his skills at Meatstock Butcher Wars with two placings this year. He was the Meatstock New Zealand's team that took out, the, took out the competition against the Aussies. Now that's what we like to hear. Let's cross to Ricky so we can have a closer look at the young butchers in action. Yeah, thanks for that, Ruben. Um, I'm standing here next to Brad now. Um, I've competed against Brad. He's awesome. He's pretty good. Makes some great sausages, by the way. Um, so it's good to see Brad still going. Doing well, mate. Looks like he's uh, doing a bit of garnishing on his sirloin there. What have we got in there? What you got in there, uh, Brad? Uh, so I've got a bit of spinach, and I'm going to put some blue cheese in there. I've got some caramelised onion sauce to just top it off. Looking good, mate. Looking good. You can see you've got some stuff on the table right now. So, uh, again, everyone, um, you're going to see these creations come together uh, over the next hour or so. Um, and as you can see, Brad, who's done these competitions, he knows what he's doing. It's going to be great. Uh, we'll be back with Brad and see the action shortly. Here we have one of the judges, Peter, taking a look at James. It's James the sirloin bone up there. Now, James Smith, I don't know what else to say about this guy. He's been doing competitions forever. Absolute legend, the tattooed butcher. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. He's in this competition in the grand final. Next week, he's getting married. Mate, how can you do that? Good for you. Um, but good on you, mate. Looking good. Uh, again, James has been around for a long time. Um, we're going to see a fantastic table. Definitely someone to watch out for. Um, and we're going to see some great stuff coming out of here. I can see it coming together down there. Looking good, mate. Looking good. Hey, Ricky, what size beef would this have come off? Um, those short lines, like they're pretty big, would be about 350, you reckon? Oh, no, I don't think they're that big, mate. They're around, uh, I don't know, 230, 240. What are you doing there? Looking good? I'm just preparing everything at the moment. I'm getting all my basic cuts out of the way, um, and then I'm going to value add at the end. So, trying to stay prepared, trying to stay ahead. Um, and yeah, generally works for me, mate. I'm hoping it's going to work today. I'm sure it will, mate. You always do. Keep it up. Okay, moving on down to Taylor Wiley. Taylor, looking good, mate. What do we got here? Look at this. Here we go. He's cutting through sirloin. Still has the bone in there. Got some garnish in there. Some stuffing. How you feeling, mate? All right? Yeah, you doing the same. Yeah, I tripped up a wee bit at the start, but yeah, just trying to enjoy myself. Enjoy yourself, that's the main thing, mate. Keep it up. Looking good. And here we are, Brian Pink, another one from uh, Evans Bacon Company, Gisborne. Gisborne Hard, eh, babe? Gisborne Hard. All right. <laughs> here we go. So, what are you got going on there? Doing some trim? It's all going to go into pork mince and pork parcels, and then we'll have a look at some interesting pork uh, cool fat rabbit pork parcels. So. Good work. Tables coming together nicely there, bro. All the boys will be watching, eh, from Evans Bacon? Hope so. They better be, eh? Yeah. Got yourself and Lee here representing Gisborne. Love Gisborne, hometown. 
And while I'm at it, kia ora all the whanau back home, maaki ha, boi dere whanau, love you. Thought I'd get that in. Okay, this guy, where's he gone? Cameron. Okay, Who's he's that over guy? Has he done a runner, that guy? He's, I think he's over on the mincer. He's so gone we'll, missing. We'll move down to Sam. He's, he's on the mincer, guys. Yeah, we'll oh, let okay. him on his mincer. We'll talk to uh, Sam. Again, um, as Ruben said, uh, both Ruben and I were very lucky and privileged to watch this girl perform over in Ireland uh, and win the uh, international title there. It was just amazing to watch her go out there representing yeah. our country. Yeah. She did it with pride, uh, absolute legend, took it out. We're so proud of her. She's definitely someone yeah. to watch out for. Yeah. And she's going to put up a display that's yeah. going to blow your mind. She's awesome to watch. Yeah, Ricky, I don't think we can underplay Sam's uh, position in this, in this butchery world. She really is uh, butcher royalty. Watching her achieve what she did in Ireland, Ireland under, under immense pressure and beat some of the best butchers in the world, including the French apprentices, was something else. Uh, she's a cool customer, and she re- when the pressure goes on, she just seems to go up a notch. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of French, she's doing a bit of plating here with some um, pastry. Not sure what she's going to make yet, but I'm sure it's going to be incredible. Looking at some of her products she's already made, wow. Uh, a lot of pesto, a lot of green, it looks like blue cheese. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Can't wait to see when this table's finished. Um, looking really good. Um, I'll just pop back over here to Cameron. He was over there making his mince. Looks like he's doing some meatballs of some sort. Maybe burger patties? Yes, burger patties. How you feeling, mate? Doing well? Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, feeling, getting into the rhythm a bit now, so nerves are starting to settle. Just enjoy the moment, mate. Enjoy the moment. He's got some products on the table right now. Looking good. Anyway, let's get back and see some of the action from the Wellington region and hear more from our sponsors. We'll be right back. And a big welcome back to all of you, wherever you're watching from around the world, whether it be New Zealand, Australia, the UK. I know we, I know you're watching in Brazil. A big hello to you people in Brazil, Germany, wherever. Let's, let's, let's get with this and let's see what's happening along the way. We're going to go past all the competitors now. We'll be starting with table one, Lee High. 39 years of age. Lee, he is, Lee, he, Lee High is two I see at Evans Bacon Company in Gisborne. Leo has never competed in a butchery competition ever before. This is his absolute first time on the rank, his first radio, so to speak. Born in Brahan, Victoria, Australia. Yes, uh, Ricky, brother, you got me. I got you now, Rod. Thank you. Uh, Lehigh's right now. I think he's over on the mincer making up some products. So we'll come back to Lehigh shortly uh, while he's doing that. Let's move on over to uh, Lua. Lua McDonald. Let's see what he's doing here. He's working on his beef at the moment. Some cheese going on there. Not sure what this is. Have a nosy. Well, that looks cute. Made in France. Sure, our French viewers will love that. 
How's everything Table going, two, Laura? We've got Laura McDonald, 35 years of age. Laura is a butchery manager at the Fresh Choice in Mungry Bridge. Lou has competed in two competition apprentice regionals, one young butcher regional, and placed ninth in the Meadstock and Butch Awards this year. Ricky. Okay, we're with Lou now. Looks like he's just stuffed part of his blade. Looks like his blade. Got some spinach leaves, bit of cheese, got bacon ready to go. We've got some cute little, uh, looks like cream cheese. Cream cheese. <laughs> He's going well at the moment. Um, putting some bacon on his product right now. Ricky, I know Lou is interested in art. Are you seeing ed any evidence in that and what he's, what he's building up to on the table? Uh, we will shortly. I can see some um, great products coming together on the table over there, which we'll, we'll get to at some point. Uh, right now, they're um, still at the uh, early stages. Um, Lou has got a whole lot of stuff on his table that he's obviously creating something big. Um, all the garnishing and stuff he's got going on here, bit of pancetta, we've got all sorts of herbs, rosemary, we've got capsicums, oranges, it's looking really good, so uh, we'll be coming back to Lewis shortly, see how he's going. Back to you, Rod. On table three, we've got Brendan Camp from New World Gore. Brendan Camp from New World Gore. 45 years of age, Brendan was 2IC in New World Gore, and he's only completed in one other butcher competition, that was in 2019, and the Dunedin Alto Butcher Regional Comp, where he was one runner-up. Ricky. Yeah, we're watching Brendan right now show his uh, boning and trimming skills. He's on his lamb leg, he's just gone up to the top of the knuckle there, cleaning the bone up, looking pretty good. Uh, his table's coming together nicely, he's finished his sirloin. Got a bit of trim there, some fat. Um, you know, something to think about. Uh, the judges will be looking at their bones and their fat, making sure that, you know, they've taken all the meat off. It's all about yield, and that's uh, part of our everyday business. Um, looking good there, Brendan. You feeling good, mate? Feeling all right? Yeah, getting better now. Getting into it. Yeah. Getting into it. Looking good too, mate. Big smile on your face. Good work. Back to you, uh, Rod. We've already talked about this guy on table four, Delmon Kimiora, uh, but let's uh, just have another recap on this young guy. He's 43 years of old. By my standards, he's young. Delmon works as a butcher at the Pack and Save in Pukekohe, and in 2019, he took part in Meatstock Butcher Competition and placed fourth. Not a bad effort. Ricky. Yes, um, I've actually got a message here for you, uh, Delmon. This is from Marita. Good luck to you, Delmon. So proud of you, brother. That's your sister? Oh, you want to say a shout out to the sister? Thank you so much. Uh, hi, sis. And uh, thank you, everybody, for your support. You know, Ricky, he's probably a little bit of a dark horse with his manager being um, the tattooed butcher, James Smith. So I think he could be one for we need to watch out for today as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just had a quick look at his table. There are some beautiful colours coming up there. His display is looking amazing right now. So he's obviously building something big. Um, looking forward to that final product. Um, yes, Delmont looking good, mate. Born in Aitutaki, Cook Islands. Proud of the Cook Islands. Go around to my brother. Going well. Back to you, Rod. Okay. Table five, Marty Hickey, skills for work. 56 years of age. Marty is a butchery tutor at Skills for Work, as we've said, and he's been competed in seven competitions and replaced and has placed in four of them. Ricky. Yes, uh, we're watching Marty right now. Uh, I've just looked at his table. The display over there is looking like out of this world stuff. True artists going on over here. Um, you know, there's a lot of young people out there that owe a lot to you, uh, Marty, in his um, tutoring and mentoring and coaching. He's a legend in our uh, industry. It's good to see him up here. He's going well, hitting his lamb at the moment, and um, looking good there, mate. Keep it up. That table looks great. Back to you, Rod. Table six, Rob Lees. I was talking to Rob Lees just before the competition kicked underway. He works very hard in a little town called Walkworth, just north of Auckland, where he runs a butchery that was called for many years Stubbs Butchery. It's actually famous in the north. Uh, 
And this, just before you go into all those developments where, uh, where Aucklanders seem to go for the weekends, the Omahas, uh, the Sandspits, all that sort of thing. So he runs a very, very seasonal business uh, and he's doing extremely well. But he's new to butchery competitions, this being his debut. What do you reckon, Ricky? Well, he might be new, this might be his debut, but I'll tell you what, I'm looking at his table and he looks like a seasoned warrior right now. He's getting through it. Walkworth must be proud, mate. He was actually born in Christchurch, I see, uh, 19 years as a butcher. And uh, so, you know, the pride of Walkworth, um, I bet you you guys are dying to get that motorway sorted out so you get all that traffic out of your town. But his table is looking something phenomenal. Um, can't wait to see the, the end product. Um, you feeling all right there, Rob? Thanks, Ricky. Yep. All cool. Any shout-outs to the farm? No, anything? All of them. Good work, mate. Sure they were watching, sure they were all proud. He's got a great cheese cutter going on there as well. Yeah, it looks awesome. Looks awesome. We're going to just um, keep it up, Rob. We're going to make our way back to Lehigh. Um, working down the end here on table one. Lehigh. Yeah, back to Lehigh on, uh, on uh, table one. He's 39 years of age. He's a 2IC at Evans Bacon Company in Gisborne. And he has never again, another one who has never competed in a butcher competition before. Is he showing the stress, Ricky? No, he's looking pretty good. He's doing all right. I've actually got a message for you, Lehigh. It just says, come on, Lehigh, gizzy hard. Only Gisborne can say that, gizzy hard. My hometown, love you. Um, he's here with his support person um, and partner, Meredith. She's sitting over there, hiding in the corner. I'll try and get her on the camera later. I know she's a bit shy. Hey, if anyone down in Gisborne, you're feeling hungry, stop in that, that hungry place, 420 Gleeson Road. All right, uh, let's go back and see some of the action from the Dunedin Regional and hear more from our, our sponsors. We'll be right back. Congratulations to James, Maria, Vichith, Isaac, Jacob and Blair for winning your regionals. I've enjoyed following your progress in the search for New Zealand's best butcher apprentice and wish you all the best of luck in the Ansco Foods Apprentice Grand Final. Ansco is proud to support Retail Meat New Zealand for the great work they do fostering up and coming talent across the industry. And we are happy to be the supplier of beef short loin for this year's competition. We wanted to supply a cut that truly tested the knife skills and knowledge of contestants and felt the short loin, or T-bone as it's commonly known, was the right cut given its bone content and complex composition. The Ansco Foods Butcher's Apprentice competition epitomizes the values we share at Ansco. Innovation starts with our people, and this competition is a platform for competitors to be pioneers in their trade. The talent showcased here is a testament to the businesses and people within those businesses that ANSCO is proud to be associated with. From all the team at ANSCO Foods, we wish you all the best of luck. Welcome back to the ANSCO Foods Butcher Apprentice Competition. 
Now, let's get to know a little more about who the contestants are, starting at table seven. Table seven, we have uh, James Beatty. He is 28 years old. He's a third year butcher's apprentice at Pack and Save Te Hawamutu. Uh, James has competed in one regional competition before, and this year he won the Waikato Regional Competition. How's he going, Ricky? Yeah, hi, Hannah. He's looking good. Um, looks like he's making some mignons over here. He's got a bit of mushroom going on, bacon around the fillet. Um, looking pretty good. Um, he wanted to do a shout out to Brendan, um, his support person who's here at the moment, Brianna, sitting over there. We'll try and get to talk to some of these people. And he wanted to do a big shout out and hello to his kids, Heidi and Lincoln, watching Dad. Wave out, mate. Yep, I'm sure they're proud of their dad. Good on you. Good on you. Looking good. We have a, if you want to just have a look around here, let's have a quick squeeze around what's going on on this table. Here we go. Bit of art going on there, people. Loving this glaze. Yeah. What's that, Ricky? Hey, um, Ricky, what's that wrapped, that leg, the, what's wrapped in bacon there? That's his pork. It looks like he's got his silver side in there. Left the bone in. Silver side, possibly part of the knuckle. Um, so... It's all boneless down this end and wrapped in bacon. Right, looks tasty. Actually, while we're here, let's get his partner on the line. Here she is, Brianna. Brianna, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Good, pretty confident. You nervous for him? Uh, I was, more nervous than him, I think. He's looking pretty good, though. Are you pretty proud, eh? Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. He's come a long way, yeah. Oh, good work. Good to see you here. Keep it up. Good work. Yeah, Ricky, you've competed uh, in a number of these, and this, everyone you've competed in, there's probably been about 500 people uh, shoulder to shoulder in the audience uh, watching and helping to put the pressure on. How different does it feel in this environment where really, as you can see, each, pe each competitor has got one spectator sitting behind them in a chair? Um, well, uh, when you're in an arena where there's about 300 people screaming and, and, and supporting um, the people they're following, uh, it can be quite disruptive and, and a bit of a distraction. I actually like this format um, because you're just working, you, you've got a bit of peace of mind, you've got someone behind you that's supporting you, the cameras obviously and the judges, but you don't have all the noise. Mm -hmm. I actually, I like this concept, I think it's great. Um, I still believe that we should probably try and get people along and maybe that could be afterwards when they finish, then all the crowd can come in later and look at the tables, I don't know. but. For me, this is great. I like this concept. It's working well at the moment. Back to you, mate. Next up on table eight, we have V Ook. V's 31 years old. We talked to quite a bit a lot about him earlier. Um, he's a third year apprentice uh, at Pack and Save Royal Oak. Uh, and this is his second appearance. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong place. Countdown Meat and Seafood, sorry, wrong place. My bad. Uh, this is V's second appearance uh, in the grand final, and he won the this year's Upper North Island Regional Comp. Ricky will specifically be able to talk quite a bit about V, um, and seeing how he's doing. Must be quite proud watching one of your guys compete. Oh, it's always proud watching anyone compete, to be fair, but when they're one of yours, one of your apprentices, and, and someone you've mentored and coached, it brings a lot of personal pride. Uh, again, he's got a great story. Um, and, you know, he's, he's representing all his family that are over in Cambodia watching. Um, that's fantastic. It's just amazing. You've got people around the world watching these guys um, competing uh, here in Auckland. Um, at the moment, it looks like he's just finishing up his lamb or his mystery cut. Got his roll going on there. Got some beautiful looking stuffing going in there. Boneless lamb roll. His table's looking amazing. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of there. Still got a bit to do. But, um, yeah, we've got a lot of time left as well. Um, Good kid, this. We're gonna we're gonna see a lot from this boy in the future. Back to you, Hannah. Next up is table nine. We have Maria Delores Pio. Uh, Maria is 54 years old. She's a second-year apprentice at Pack and Save Rangiora, and this is Maria's second appearance at the grand final. Uh, this year, Maria just missed out on winning the Upper South Island Regional, but made it as a wild card winner when having the next highest score across the country. Yes, uh, just been watching uh, Maria cut her uh, pork rump. She's into her knuckle now. Looks like she's giving that a bit of a trim up. Not sure what she's going to make with it yet. Still got her silver side sitting there and her top side off the pork. Bit of pork trim to go in there. So who knows what she's going to make out of that to create something wonderful. Table's looking good so far. 
Um, but she's got some wonderful colours going on here. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see what she creates. Hannah. Next up, we've got table 10, Jacob Wells from New World Foxton. He is 21 years old with two years, um, or in his second year rather, as a butchery apprentice. Uh, and Jacob won the Wellington Regional Comp. And this is his debut as well at the grand final. Yes, uh, we've got Jacob. I've actually got a shout out from some of his fans. Uh, here we go, Jacob Legrand Carter, your brother. Yeah, uh, best of luck, all the brothers are watching. Pun Michael Docky, is it Docky? Docky, I was going to say Donkey, sorry about that, Docky. Sparky, Noli, and I think that says Ghost Snake. <laughs> is there something in that? Is that your nickname, Snake? Yeah, you want to you share? Jake the Snake, how'd you get that name? Uh, big penis. Okay, this is the X rated <laughs> program. I shouldn't have said that was my fault. <laughs> that was. Well, man, you did not go. see that one coming, did you, Ricky? Well, I should have known better. We're butchers. We, 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 we just say whatever comes to their mind. You did know. <laughs> so, anyway, Jacob, you're looking good, but he's in there. He's um, working away. He's about to hit his, uh, oh, his four loin. Here we go. So, he's going to hit that. We're going to see some skills coming off that. Hey, mate, it sounds like you've got a few fans out there, all the brothers down there in um, Foxton. Yeah, great little town that. I've been there once. Got a speeding ticket and I left. Pretty town. Yeah, well, Ricky, it. we're not we're not letting you ask any more questions. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're off questions for the moment. <laughs> yeah. But we've got a series of questions coming on lo on live stream. And this is: Do most butchers do the cooking at home? Well, I know in my generation of butchers what the answer is. But what is it with you, younger generation of butchers? Do you guys do the cooking at home? Are uh, you asking me, Rod? Well, no, because you, you're not in that you, younger Ricky. generation, Ricky. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't mind cooking, but I have my own thing. I like to do it. But uh, look, I, I think, um, to be fair, most butchers, we're quite particular about our meat. So um, when I go to a barbecue, I like to see what I'm cooking, what I'm going to eat. Um, it's a butcher thing. We, we, we know what we like. Yeah. Um, as far as cooking at home goes, look, um, hey, each to his own. I've got a lovely wife at home. She cooks for me. You, I thought I'd better yep. put that in because I forgot her anniversary last week. Love you, honey. Bye. <laughs> Okay, um, moving on. Hey, Ricky, are we able to have a chat with the judges and see what they're thinking at the moment? Absolutely. Let's see if we can track one down. Here we go. Let's see what's going on. All right, here we go. Um, anything standing out at the moment without giving too much away, obviously? Yeah, some good skills coming through, um, like the bone removal and, and just the skin removal of the pork's coming along fine. You know, impressive, very impressed. And the, the calibre of what you see, the, the skills here, uh, you know, and, and you've seen many competitions in the past. What do you think of uh, what you're looking at today? Oh, I've still got a long way to go. No, they're pretty good. <laughs> they are pretty good, eh? It is quite hard being a judge, isn't it? It's it's very fine line, isn't it? Oh, it's, I enjoy being the judge when you pick up on those things that you remind yourself about when you were an apprentice yourself and, you, and your boss picked you up for, you know, not marking correctly and all those types of things. and getting the end result of clean bones and good yield. So, you know, it all, all comes back when, you, when you're actually watching someone doing it. It's great. Yeah. Good work, mate. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. Um, oh, we've got young Jeremy over here. We're going Jeremy. over to table 11. Table 11? Where is he? I think he's on the bandsaw. Should we go and have a look, see what he's doing? Yep. Let's mosey on over to the bandsaw. So at table 11, we've got Blair Wright from Peter Tim's Meats. Blair is only 18 years old. He's absolutely our youngest competitor this evening. Um, young and spry, full of energy. Uh, he is a second year butcher's apprentice uh, and he won the Christchurch Regional Comp, although this is, of course, his debut in the grand final. Well, we've just seen Blair um, cut a couple of nice juicy T-bones, nice big thick ones, just how I like it. Um, so obviously he's got a couple of T-bones going on there. Got a message for you, Blair. Donna Wright says, go Blair, proud of you. Who's Donna Wright? Your mum. You want to say I love you, mum? Yeah, I love you, mum. Oh, look, he's a bit shy. He loves his mum. We all love our mum. Even us bad guys love our mums. Looking good. Yeah, Ricky, uh, and I, I interviewed Blair this morning as part of his, uh, his live procedures, and one of the things that all of the competitors came through in the interviews was how much time was important for them, and they'd really been concentrating on time. And we know in this competition, time is your enemy. Uh, is it too soon to tell whether time's becoming an issue for anybody yet? Uh, look, I'm looking at time now. I think we've got about an hour. 
Thank I'll, you. about that. I'll leave that up to the timekeeper. But I think everyone's looking on target. I know um, when I did it, and I know a few other guys that uh, have done the competition, time is something you forget when you start working. You forget about everything. But I think our timekeeper, official timekeeper, is about to call it. Oh, don't put that in. Competitors, you have one hour remaining. Okay. So there we have it, we've got one hour, and I think everyone's looking on target. Um, but yeah, what I was going uh, talking about, you do lose focus on the time because you're, you're just, you know, head down. And then all of a sudden someone yells out 45 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's a mad rush. Uh, but I think uh, it might be pretty good to know. And I think that a lot of that comes down to the fact that they don't have the crowds and all the noise, and they can yep. actually um, really focus on what they're doing. Back to you, Hannah. Going on to table 12 now, we have Jaden Seeger from Countdown Central. He is 23 years old. He's a f uh, been four years as a butcher apprentice at Countdown Central in Dunedin. And Jaden was the runner up of the Lower South Island Regional Competition. But due to an energy, sorry, due to an injury, the winner was unable to compete in the grand final. And so Jaden's score was the next highest. And here he is. He was only given two weeks notice though for coming up to Auckland. What, does, he, does he look nervous? Well, to be fair, Anna, um, I'll tell you what, that is not a good position to be in where you've only been given two weeks to, to get ready for the Nationals. And you know what, looking at his table, outstanding. He's actually looking really good. He looks calm. Um, he looks like he's enjoying it too. Saw well, a couple of smiles there. I've actually got a uh, message for you, Jaden. Um, doing us proud, lots of love, mum, nana, grandpa, watching from Timaru. You want to say hello? Hey, mum, how you going? Hey, nana. Hey, one thing we learned about um, Jaden was um, no wonder he's um, able to handle this in two weeks is that he's into musical performances and also does the old tap dancing. So that's probably why he was quick on the feet and was able to jump to it. Tap dancing, okay, I wasn't sure about that. When I talked to him today, he told me he was a metalhead, loves his metal. He's our uh, local metal, metal boy. Um, but no, look, he's going well considering um, the short time that he had to get ready. But you know what? Uh, I've seen a guy who only had a week um, to get ready for that. That was uh, young Corey White. He'll be watching. Um, he actually had a week to get ready because of uh, someone having to pull out for whatever reason. And he actually came through and took it out. So, you know, you never know. It's all about the night and what you can do. I'm sure Jaden also wants to give a shout out probably to some of his mentors. He has uh, Greg Egerton, the uh, owner of Princess Street Butchery down to Dunedin, as well as Paul Mason, a manager from countdown central both of them have really been helping him on his cuts and making sure every little thing looks really nice and tidy yeah absolutely and our good mate uh, greg uh down there in dunedin he's a legend absolute legend miss you greg i hope you're watching i'm sure you are um good work with all your mentoring as you do uh, great coaching mate good and hopefully we'll hear from you soon it's gonna mosey on around i've got luca over here so luca um He's also a member of our Sharp Black team. Tell us what you're uh, judging, Luca. So I'm judging the uh, best beef product, pork product, chicken product, and cleanest bones. So just been going around and watching them all bone out the separate primals and slowly looking at the products that are coming out now. Any standouts? Without giving too much away, any standouts? There is a few standouts, yes. Real nice clean bones, eh? Something you probably wouldn't know about, eh? <laughs> Don't you work at Back and Save? Oh, so that slipped. Sorry, people. I'm taking a few tips away, that's for sure. Yeah. We're all friends here. Oh, those countdown bones are pretty clean. Anyway, what else we got going on? Hey, Ricky, would this be pretty normal for all these guys for what they'd be doing on a, the day at work? Um, no. To be fair, a lot of these guys wouldn't be doing... Um, the, the, well, put it this way, they'll be doing slicing, cutting, boning and whatever, but they wouldn't be making these types of products unless they're in a boutique um, shop or maybe uh, on a service bar in a supermarket making gourmet cuts. Um, but a lot of these cuts, they're creations. It's, it's all about creating and using your imagination and coming up with things that you wouldn't see uh, in a butcher shop one day or anywhere. Um, and that's what it's about, just using your imagination. And sometimes you see products that come out of these competitions, the next week everyone's selling it. Uh, you know, they just created something no one thought of. 
Um, yeah, Ricky, Ricky, Hannah's touched on a, on a good point there um, and as much of the, as the work that has to go on uh, once you know that you're in the final and you've got a number of weeks to prepare for it um, and you've still got to do your day job, you've still got to earn your wages uh, do, doing the job that your employer pays you for. So I guess for many of these guys it's, it's after hours training that the really I'm sure that extra effort really has to go on. It's, it's no accident that you get here performing as well as you do. Yeah, absolutely, Rod. Um, I know from personal experience uh, training uh, all the many apprentices I've had over the years and that have been in these competitions, um, yes, you do have to get on with your normal daily routine and then uh, basically in your own time we do our training and a lot of effort goes into it. Uh, there's a lot of planning and obviously you've got to think about what you want to do as far as uh, your display. Um, a lot of work, and, and you know, these guys, they, they put it in, and without the support people around them, the, the people they work for, their managers, uh, obviously the company they work for, uh, without their help, they wouldn't be here today. So a big shout out to all you owners, operators, uh, managers, whatever it may be. Uh, you should be proud that your, your guys are here performing and doing a great job. Um, good for you guys. Keep it up. Have you seen any sausage fillers there um, that you reckon that some guy's going to start whipping out some sausages? Or? Um, I've actually seen one at the moment. It's our good mate Brad. We all know he wow. loves a good old sausage, old Brad. So he's got his down there. I'm just looking at it right now. And, and Ricky, Hannah and uh, Ruben, you're all sharp blacks. Um, and, and, you know, this is obviously where it all begins. M most of you, in fact, all of the three of you virtually worked your way through the system in, in these sort of competitions uh, and finish up on the world stage. Now, unfortunately, because um, COVID threw in a hand grenade in the middle of the world uh, earlier this year, we weren't able to have the... Uh, at World Butchers Challenge Championship in Sacramento this year, but it certainly will definitely be hold. And as we know, uh, some of the, the prizes for the winners and the apprentices is a is a trip uh, to um, the, the World Butchers Challenge or the World Apprentice Challenge. Uh, I know, know for yourself, Ricky and Ruben, you, you've, you've been to it, but this would have been your first year competing. Just tell us a bit about uh, how you felt the disruption to that and uh, I guess... I know the team's still together and how you're looking forward to when we finally get the show on the road. Well, yeah. uh, oh, Ruben, I'll let you come in. I'm just walking around at the moment. Yeah, it was, it was, I went over there on the captain's run. I was lucky enough to be invited to do that. And um, it was to see to be able to compete in the world um, golden centre would have been absolutely amazing. But I'll tell you what, what we've put on here um, in tonight, it's, I think we've, we can put our hands together because I, I think it's very close to sort of, with all the lights and the cameras, I th um, it would have been pretty amazing to be over there. But I think we've got a pretty good show going on here as well. Yeah, I think that's quite cool, Ruben. You make a good point. I don't know if we get a chance with the camera, but if the Ravian camera could just raise a bit and show this wonderful circular lighting that uh, we've installed this afternoon. There, there you go, you folks. Are. Look at that. If that's not Hollywood, what is it? Well, I'm sort of waiting for E.T. to come down or E.T. to put his finger out and say he wants to go home. Um, but we've <laughs> still got about another hour to go here, I think. Yeah, and Hannah, you did you did, you did world, two world competitions. You did one yeah. in Australia and, and one in um, in Ireland, where you were a silver medalist. Um, that must have been a great experience for you. And, and um, even with the accent you've got, you're still a true blue Kiwi. I know the accent doesn't go away. It doesn't matter how long I'm here, but yeah, absolutely Kiwi. And uh, it's oh, just an amazing experience. I think this is a starting step. You know, sort of a stepping stone to that um, you know the goal of being a being a sharp black and seeing what that is my journey started with the uh, north versus south back when when that was a competition and uh, just such an amazing journey to be able to compete and you know the coolest thing I saw when we we're getting ready today is just everyone's going around you know shaking hands and having you know just they're all really they're all mates even though they're competing against each other now they're all they're all mates before and after so it's pretty cool Hey, hey guys, I've got another shout out here for uh, James Beatty. So proud of you, brother. We are all watching you. Love Zach, Lily, Emilia, Alicia, and I think that's Ismail. Ismail? Ismail. Oh, big shout out for you, mate. Family, I'm assuming. Yeah, proud of you. Good work.
Okay, well, Ricky, just... Ricky, before I ask you the next question, I, I notice a lot of signs uh, in the background there uh, as you're talking, and I, I know we, we refer to our sponsors, but um, we really would not be at this competition without the fabulous sponsors that we've got. You know, a a Ansco Foods, uh, uh, Pure South, Teagle, Cabernet Foods, Beef and Lamb New Zealand, New Zealand Pork, I'm sure I've missed one. Uh, Dunningham's uh, for supplying all the machinery. Thank you, because, um, thank you, thank you to Dunningham's, thank you to Competence. I said Beef and Lamb New Zealand, but I'll say that one again. <laughs> hope, you, hope, you, hope you don't mind. But, but look, really, all jokes aside, it's, we, uh, it, I know you hear it all before, but it just wouldn't be happening uh, without these guys who just support us so thoroughly. And, and I think in a year like we've had with COVID, I know when we started off this year and we knew we were in trouble in terms of having a having events um, that we didn't know where we were going to be. But without fail, every sponsor, and we spoke to them, said, we're still in no matter what. And that was so encouraging. Amazing. OK, guys, um, let's go back and see some of the action from the Christchurch Regional and hear more from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Wilson Hellaby was formed in 1998. Its core focus has always been the domestic market, and that's very much the butchers, the supermarkets, and the food service outlets, restaurants, hotels, institutions. Technology throughout the operation includes smart stimulation, delivering a high level of tenderness within 24 hours post-slaughter, which is essential for the domestic market. 2019 has seen the introduction of further new processing equipment into our beef and lamb processing rooms which is enhancing the appearance of primal cuts, x-raying trims, and with an online focus on yield and optimising value. We focus on delivering quality products, cut the specification, and delivering on time. We operate 52 weeks of the year with no shutdown period. Wilson, Hellaby and AMP have committed themselves to staying in the cold bone uh, activity for breaking beef. The purpose of that is to ensure that the cuts are reflective of the quality of stock we're processing and is suitable for the butchers that we sell to. The on-site IBEX storage and distribution facility delivers plate blast freezing, frozen and chilled storage and daily distribution to retail customers. All chilled export consignments are loaded on site and sent directly to the port. There's a vast range of livestock out on our farms and you need your own group of buyers who particularly select suitable meat for our butchers and therefore our customers. Our butchers know good meat and they expect us to supply that. Welcome back to the Alto Young Butcher competition. Now we've just had the 45 minute whistle, so let's go down to the contestants starting at table number 13. Table, we have 
Um, sorry, Brad Gillespie here from Rotorua. He's been in six butchery competitions at a young age of 28. Yeah, uh, thanks Ruben. Um, down here with Brad right now. He's working on his pork leg. Uh, just looking at some of his products on the table, looking pretty good. Um, how you doing, Brad? How you feeling, mate? Oh, feeling pretty good at the moment, yeah. yeah. Five to go. Anyone's game. Looks like you've got the old filler going on then. You're going to be making some of your world-famous sausages. Always, mate. Always. Good work, Brad. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's got some bags going on here. Looks like he's going to put some stuff in there. Looks really good. Um, his table's coming along quite well yep. too, so we've got time. Ricky, Brad always makes sausages that have lots of veggies in them, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, I just look at them and just think they're beautiful. I don't care what's in them. He makes a great <laughs> sausage. <laughs> nice rounded meal. <laughs> All right. Um, back to you, uh, Roops. Yep. Um, next up, table 14, we've got James Smith, which is the youngest member of the Hellish Sharplacks, but... Age does not mean a thing when it comes to uh, James. He's got as much experience as all of us in competitions. He's been in 15 in total so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he's, he's almost like a, an old member of the team, to be fair, with the amount of competitions he's done. Um, looking at all the colours on his table, i just seen him uh, put some coal fat around one of his products, looking great. Um, we're going to yep. get some close-ups soon. Um, but he's slowly potting away these uh, on his lamb shoulder at the moment. Um, actually, if we just sneak through here, let's have a quick squiz, see what we're looking at here, eh? Look at that. How's that? Yeah. That's Here's amazing. A, <clears throat> he doesn't look too dusty after his um, stag do that he had on the weekend, and I think he's getting married this weekend. Yeah, he's getting married this weekend, and uh, I think he's just a machine. He just keeps going, and, um, and he keeps putting up quality products like what you're looking at right now. Yeah, Ricky, uh, James is one of those guys that just loves being an innovator and creating new products. Um, uh, I can recall he must have just started his career, but, but way back in 2014 when the Sharp Blacks went to the UK uh, to, to uh, compete over there, James paid his own way there, followed the team around everywhere and just was at that, even at that age, was prepared to back himself and invest in the industry. And, uh, you know, the proof of that you're, you're witnessing right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with what he does with the tattooed butcher, actually, while we're here, we're going to put her on the spot a little. We'll go and talk to his fiance and see how she's feeling. Um, Tony, is it? Is it Tony? Tony, um, how are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> you're all worried about James? He's all good? Nah, he'll be all right. He always pulls it off. <laughs> and you're looking forward to the big day next week? Yes, this week's all about him. And then it's wedding. <laughs> and then it's all about you for the next how many years? Yeah. yeah that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it's like, 28 years. Hey, good luck, and, and I hope you have a great day next week. Here's an old mate of ours. What are you doing here, mate? What's up? What's going on? Just here to watch, mate, support support the boys do this thing. And, and how's the shop going down uh, up there in uh, Mungawai? Yeah, it's good, mate. Just, just gearing up for the busy season, trying to get everything organised for Christmas and all the hand production and everything like that. Mm. There you go, Fano. Anyone up north heading up towards Mungawai, go see the bro here. He's got a great shop. Go and uh, support the local butcheries, you know. Get in there and they're good people. So good to see you, mate. And we'll be seeing you around soon, eh? Definitely. Let's grab one of the judges. We've got um, Alana. Alana. Without giving too much away, Alana. Um, tell us what you're seeing. Any standouts? Anything that's just caught your eye and blown you away? Yeah, there's a couple of things there that look look fantastic, um, but there's there's some pretty highly skilled competitors here tonight. Pretty hard to judge, eh? Yeah. yeah. Good luck with that, mate. Good luck. Back to you, Rubes. Right, we've got Taylor Willie um, that's coming up next. He's 28 years of age. He's been qualified for four years, and he works at New World Gardens. And I'm loving his moustache. Um, I think he might have started it before the start of uh, first of November. Um, it's sort of. I wonder if he's going to get a bit of uh, get the twirls going on there. I'm still trying to get mine working. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to work hard there, um, Ruben. Hey, um, he's just done some pork schnitzels. He's got a lot of uh, roast products going on the table there, looking good. Looks like a whole lot of colour. Um, we'll get some close-ups of what he's doing at the moment. 
Um, how are you feeling, Taylor? How are you going? Well, I've had a few hiccups, eh, but that's what happened on the day. Ah, oh, they were not hiccups, mate. It's all experience. Are you loving it? Are you enjoying it? Having a good time. It's bloody hot in here, though. Any shout-outs, any fun you want to say hello to? Say so, g'day to my missus, Tay, and my family that's watching. Hey, guys. Good on you, mate. Good to see you here. So he's plodding along. Yep. Hey, we've got a shout-out um, to um, Corey Parker, which is um, Taylor's um, mentor that's um, sort of helped him to get to the grand final. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I was um, uh, talking about earlier, you know, all these managers and owners of businesses and and butchers and, and whatever you want to call them, your boss, you know, um, without those guys supporting these, these young fellas here, they wouldn't be here. So, you know, you've got to um, acknowledge all those people in behind the scenes. Rubes? Yep. Uh, we're coming along to um, Braham Pink from Evans Bacon. We've got a couple of guys here from, um, so they must sort of know what they're doing down there. He's 24 years old. He's been in the meat industry for nine years and been a qualified butcher for one. Um, he won the regional Wellington and um, was the first ever butcher. That was his first competition that he'd done. Yeah, that's outstanding. Uh, again, uh, Gizzy Hart. I've actually got a um, few messages here for Bram uh, from Mum Bram. Mum said to say she's so proud of you. That's cute. That's awesome, mate. You want to say hello, Mum? Hey, Mum. Thanks for supporting me. Always love mum. Got a couple more here, um, Bram. Uh, Mouse, it's one of your boys, is it? Sisters. Sorry, sorry, Mouse. Uh, we're all watching back home. So proud of you. Um, Sonny, good luck to my little brother. So proud. The whole fam's, the whole fam, Bams, is watching. Awesome. Because he hard. Another one for you, Bram. Shout out from his big sister, Shanara. She's watching live from Australia. Hello, Shanara. Must be proud. I'm sure the whole family are. He's looking good. Um, pretty good for his first time. And um, obviously getting to the final all the way from Gisborne. Pretty good. Love Gisborne. Hometown. Because oh, he hard, eh, bro? Yo. Good work. Back to you, Rubes. Yep. Uh, next one, we've got Cameron Fletcher from New World. He's 23 years old, five years as a butcher, and works at New World Hanswell. Cameron's first butchery competition was this year in the Christchurch Regional. Although he didn't win, he made it through as a wild card. Yeah, and it's good to see him. He's actually, uh, you know, he's up there. He's doing a great job. I've actually got a, uh, oh, got a shout out for you, uh, Cam. Oh, I'm not sure if I want to say it, but I will anyway. Uh, two people cheering for Cam. Here we go. Nikita Wills and your Tinder date. Uh, something you want to tell us? Anything we need to know? Dad, there's mum and dad playing the fool. Mum and dad playing the fool. Oh, well, you've got great parents. That's really cool. Uh, here's another one. Go hard, Cam. You're doing us proud, but love the voice. At least they love didn't the say voice. the grinder. Yeah. Nah, a bit of an amateur singer, I think. So. <laughs> and uh, how are you feeling at the moment? How's it all going for you? Uh, good. Been, been a few hiccups in that with it being the first time, but uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. Yeah. That's the key, mate. Enjoy the moment, enjoy the experience. Come back and do it again. It's all about loving it, eh? Loving our trade, aren't we? Back to you, Rubes. We've got Sam Weller um, coming um, that we've got here. Sam's 26 years of age. She's at Pack and Save Ring Eurors, the 2IC, and she's um, been in five but true competitions. Um, she's done very well. I was able to watch her, as I said earlier, over in Ireland, and I was actually also the judge for it. And she did blimmin' well going up against some of the French and all the other people around the world. So I'd definitely be watching her and what she can pull out tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving what she's making. Um, she just finished some mince products, got some pastry going on, um, getting ready to put some tickets up. I'm just going to have a quick look at her table. Um, oh, my God. Got to see this, cameraman. Now this is a sight. It is amazing. Yeah. Can you hear me? Loving what she's putting on at the moment. Just amazing. Way to go, Sam. Back to you, Rubes. Right, who we got now coming up? 
All right, we're we've got a few shout outs that are coming up here. So we're going to pass it on to Hannah. We're going to pass it on. So we've got, um, I think our first live shout out is Churley's on Dominion Road. Hama Behemoth Brewing and Lady Butcher. Woohoo! Uh, that is also our official watch party. So I know there's quite a few groups there watching uh, live, and it's also the after party when we all finish up here and, and the, after the winners are announced. Have you got a late license for that? Yeah. Good. We don't plan on going home. <laughs> Butchers you're talking to. Boys look thirsty too. R Ricky, I know I keep uh, bringing this up, but... I'm starting to feel for a lot of these guys. The nerves are getting to me. We're really down to about, I don't know what it is, it must be only about 30 minutes to go. The pressure must really come on now because you've not only got to finish your cutting, you've got to tidy up, you've got to clean up, you've got to have the place as immaculate looking as you possibly can. Uh, how, how are you seeing? Are you getting to sense that pressure or is everybody cool, calm and collected? Yeah, I think um, for all our audience out there watching, what they've got to remember, there's, there's a... There's a story behind these tables. It's not just who's got the best looking table, who's got the best looking cut. It's about safety. It's about how clean they are, their hygiene, uh, obviously the products they put up. It's also about cooking. Um, we need to know that what they're putting up is cookable. Uh, anyone can make anything, but if it doesn't make sense and it can't cook, um, well, yeah, you're going to get judged against that. It's about how clean your bones are. It's about yield. So there is a story behind what they're doing. Um, and that's for our audience at home so you understand. I know in the past, uh, in competitions, people have always just thought the best looking table must have won it. Well, that's not the case. The judges actually have a, um, a, a, a very difficult job in making sure that they, they can, you know, it's very fine. It comes down to the little things. And it could be things like um, the way they tied their string, um, they're not even. Um, it could be, a, you know, they didn't trim it properly, there's a little bit of fat on there. That's how close these competitions are. These are the best in the country. These guys practice for this, they, they get pushed hard, they create these amazing products, and on the day, it could all turn to custard because of your nerves. So, you know, there's a big story going on behind there. The judge has got a difficult job. Um, I've done it before, and, I, you know, I don't like judging. It's so hard. Uh, and you have to make that difficult decision, and it could come down to one little thing. So, yeah, it's pretty good out here. So, um, yeah, back to you guys. Uh, it's looking good right now. I just want to touch on, um, there's a few new awards that are up for grabs um, tonight. Not only the Alto Young Butcher and the Ansco Foods Butchery Apprentice, we've got the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Best Beef Product. We've got New Zealand Pork Best Pe Pork Product, Tegel Foods, the Best Chicken, Cabernet Foods, the Cleanest Bones, and the Comptan's Emergent Talent for the Apprentice who is showing some real promise. Yeah, those are great awards, and it's a good initiative to bring those in um, because... Sometimes you find that guy, uh, certain people have a, an amazing skill at a particular product, or it could be boning. Um, so we're going to get to see that, which is great. Um, and Competitors, you have 30 minutes remaining. 30 minutes. All right, pressure's on now, 30 minutes. This is where you're going to see the rush come in. Probably in the next 15 minutes, you'll see the rush. You'll see them running around, getting those last-minute details put together, their table building. Um, and that's when it gets exciting, so I can't wait to see that. Back to you guys. And as a competitor, that's when the real sweat starts running down your back. It might not be that hot in here, but they'll be in the hot seats yeah. and working on their benches. And this is where the yeah. trade-off comes in, guys, doesn't it? Because it's how much you want to do, how much you want to achieve with your table, uh, but the other side of it, how much you have to finish in the time. So it's it's one thing versus the other, really, and uh, that's where the pressure comes on. I know, I know I'm know, watching you two guys compete. Uh, you know, some of the variety of things that you produced and the, the, and the different things were quite amazing, but they do take time. And if you don't get finished in time, really you can do the best half, half supply in the world, but it's not good enough to win. Yeah, you definitely got to watch that trim, eh? Making sure that it's... If you're going to have to leave it behind, that's nice, clean and tidy. You've separated the fat from the meat. Make sure your bones are clean. Um, otherwise, making sure you use it all. Yep. I, I can recall in the World Butchers Challenge in Ireland um, that there were only two teams uh, of the 12 that actually completed and uh, yeah. distributed all the product that they'd boned out. 
and one of them was the one that, that won the competition. So, uh, and, and they may not have necessarily had the best display, although it was superb, I have to say. Uh, but this, this side of it's so important. <laughs> Finishing on time and completing everything in a tidy fashion. Okay, guys, uh, let's go back and see some of the action from the mighty Waikato Regional and hear more from our sponsors. We'll be back shortly. And a big welcome back, everybody. We, we really are now getting down to the wire on this. We haven't got too far to go. We're about to concentrate in this segment on the Pure South Master Butchers uh, table. But uh, just, just to let you know that one of our competitors, Marty Hickey, has had to withdraw halfway through uh, the competition. Um, Mark, Marty turned up today. He wasn't feeling the best, but he was determined uh, to start the competition. But really, uh, as he got into it, he felt he should do the wise thing. Thing. and so Marty was withdrawn and we wish him all the very best. Uh, so that's now down, down to five, but it doesn't mean get any easier for the five that are remaining. We really are getting down to very, very short period of time left. This is when the pressure comes on. This is what we've been talking about with Hannah, Ruben and Ricky. Uh, this is when you either win or you lose the championship. So who have we got left out there? We've got, uh, we've got Brendan Kemp. We've got Del Del Delmon Kimiora, we've got Lehigh Takira, we've got Lua McDonald, and we've got Rob Lees from Walkworth. Uh, Ricky, you're out there. How's it going? Yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, I'm right here with uh, Lehigh at the moment, representing Gisborne. Um, hey, look, you know, there's still plenty of time. He's working on his um, lamb at the moment. Looks like he's doing some lamb racks here. Not sure if he's going to do whole ones or he's doing cutlets. Um, looking at his table, looking amazing. There's a few products here. That lamb looks great. So, yeah, he's doing well. Actually, while we're here, I've got his partner sitting over there hiding in the corner. Let's go and say hello to her, see what she thinks at the moment. 
Kilda, Kilda. Ricky, some of those tables are looking a bit empty. Should I be worried? No, no, not yet. We've got time. Uh, this is where they all start to rush around. I'm just with uh, the partner of Lehigh, uh, Meredith Kilda, sister. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, oh nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Proud, though, eh? Yeah, hard out. Big shout out to all the whanau back home in Gizzi. Yep, um, everyone that works at that hangi place and Stephen Jackie Watson, Tommy and Rod. Oh, yeah. No chair too much. Love you. I'm sure you're watching. Proud as, but uh, he's going to go well. Uh, get ready. It's going to be awesome. The finish is great. Let's go back down. Um, we're going to um, move on over to Lua. Time check in a minute and a half, Ricky. We've got a time check in a minute and a half coming up. Okay. Here we are with Lua McDonald. He's working on his leg here. Looks like he might have put some stuffing in there. Not sure. How are you feeling, Lua? Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. You got plenty of time, eh? Yeah, you looking good? Yeah. So he's still working on his lamb. Uh, most of his table's up. Still got plenty of garnishing to do by the looks of it. Uh, but that's all right, he's, he, you know, these guys all nail it there, as they do every year. Back to you, Rob. Thank you, Ricky. Yeah, well, these guys, of course, uh, they're, they're the best. These are the, these are the master butchers. These are what we expect to be seeing, the sort of quality of stuff that, that, that we are seeing. And um, I don't know what you guys think on, on, the, on the front table here, but uh, Hannah, you've been to a few of these. How, what are, what's your observations and what you're seeing? Yeah, everything's looking really good. I'd say it's definitely crunch time now. Eh? It's uh, that last 30 minutes when definitely start to maybe move a little bit faster, run. Um, also, uh, Ricky, I have a question for you. Just around the judging, you know, at this point in time, what are the judges checking for in this last 30 minutes? Like, is it one thing in particular, a bit of everything, kind of making sure things are staying nice and tidy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're at the uh, 20 minute mark. Uh, about this time, I think the judges are more looking about how tidy they are because you, mm. this is where you start rushing. Uh, and, you, and the panic might set in depending on where you are with your table. Um, so they'll be looking how clean they are and, and making sure the floor's nice and clean. Uh, and because most of their products are on the table, the judges have probably already had a good look at their finished products and they would have already um, uh, marked those and now they're just going to keep an eye on the competitors and see where they are and, and what they're going to do from here. Yeah, there's no, um, there's no way you can hide your mistakes with old uh, Eagle Eyes, um, Corey there. Um, he'll be watching um, every bit of the move. Yeah, absolutely. I'm over here with Brendan at the moment. Big shout out to Brendan. Um, Holly Kemp says, go dad from Dylan, Diana and Holly. Yeah, proud dad over there. Look at him. Uh, good luck, Brendan. Bring it home. Love from your wife, Jamie and Krista. So he's looking good. He's actually uh, quite calm. And it looks like he's got most of his products up. Pretty close. He's uh, working on his tickets now. Yep, pretty close. So good work, Brendan. Back to you, Rod. If he's putting his tickets on display, he's going to be ahead of a game of, game of darts of someone soon. Yeah, absolutely. OK, um, let's go back and see some of the action from the Auckland Regional and uh, hear more from our sponsors. We'll be right back.
We're back, back in the action. Um, we only, down to the wire here. Pippa just called about the 15 minute timers, so we're a little bit less than that now. Uh, and it's time to go back to the apprentices. Ricky, what are we looking like over there? I'm, I'm back down here with uh, James. Uh, at the moment, I'm with uh, our chef judge, Mark. So oh. um, tell me, Mark, uh, what are you seeing out there that's impressing you, anything? Yeah, some, uh, some really good stuff. It's, um, it's awesome talking to the competitors, and a lot of these guys I can um, imagine myself as a customer going into their butchery and having them explain these dishes to me. So like, really impressed with uh, how engaged they are, uh, really impressed with some of the knife skills, uh, a lot of thought gone into the dishes. You know, As I've gone around, I've talked to people about flavour combinations and, and why they've put things together, and um, yeah, a lot of thought. So yeah, real genuine impressed. So has there been anything where you, they've said, I'll put this in there and I've tried that and you went, mm, or is everything okay? What do you reckon? Yeah, it's just like judging chef's comps. There's always a couple where you ask those questions and you think, oh, you know, mate, you've almost got it right, but you've, you've just got that last little bit wrong. But yeah, there's been a couple. But uh, again, overall impression is, um, you know, these are professionals. They're doing a good job. Awesome, Mark. Thanks for your time. Um, another big shout out for James. Go, James. We're all watching. And Heidi and Lincoln say good night. We miss you. Oh, that's cute. We're nearly there, people. He's working on his chicken right now. And this is where it gets uh, yeah, the knife skills come in, working on a chicken and deboning a whole chicken because they're so small. So you've got to be very good with your knives and careful. Ricky, is there a method to the order in which they're doing the cuts? Uh, no, I think uh, most guys will do their chicken last uh, for hygiene reasons. So they'll do their beef or their pork, lamb, and so on. And I think most of the um, competitors, if not all, will save the chicken for last for that reason. Got another shout out here to V from Richard and Nirvana. We all watching you, brother? I hope that was for you, V. <laughs> it was? Working on your chicken? How you feeling? Good, good, good. Good. Yeah. I don't really want to disturb the competitors right now because they're coming down to the wire. So we'll move along. Maria's over here, going well as usual. Amazing products, plenty of colour, a lot of flavour. Uh, we've got a shout out for Maria. Go Maria, go. We are watching and cheering from Brazil. Amanda, awesome. Uh, uh, feel good, eh, Amanda? Three o'clock in the morning, Ricky. It's three o'clock in the morning over there, apparently. Feeling good? Great. Table's looking fantastic. I Moving can't wait along. to get down there and actually have a look at it ourselves. Yeah, they look great, mate. Uh, moving along, we're with uh, Jacob Wells. Um, here's another shout out. Let's go, Snakey. Love from the naughty men. Okay. There's a lot going on down in Foxes. Might want to be careful when you go through that town. Um, <laughs> Shout out to my son. We're all watching you from home in Fox and Joe Roberts. Yeah. Oh, that's proud. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, he's working on his chicken. So he's almost there. Table's looking great. He's looking calm. Family are proud. Good story. Ricky, what happens to all the meat when they're finished? Uh, so the tables, uh, we used to auction them actually to the people that would be at the event. And obviously they're not here. So I think they've all been pre-sold. I hope they have. If they haven't, um, all you people online might want to get your dibs in and try and buy these tables, man. They're some great, fantastic products for a very, very cheap price. I know I got my box already lined up. Great. We're here with uh, Blair. Good luck, Blair, from Abby, Josh, Auntie Charmaine, and Uncle Toby. He's a bus bit busy right now, Fano, so um, yeah, you can see him focusing on his table, doing those last minute touches. Doing great, Blair. You got this. We're all proud of you. From Jane. Ten minutes remaining. Ten minutes. Okay, we've got ten minutes to go. Moving along. Jaden from Countdown Central. He's almost finished. He's almost wrapping up his table now. Here's one uh, rooting for, uh, for Jaden and V. Rooting for you both. Jade and Envy, we are all behind you. Yeah, that's it. Ayla J, fighting. Yeah. Here's another message for Jaden and uh, V, Paul Lewis. Go the countdown, boys. Good luck to all the contestants. Enjoy the evening, guys and girls. It's looking pretty good. We're coming down to the wire, people. We're not far away. Now we're moving over to Brad. 
Right, uh, let's take another look at um, who the Alto Young Butcher finalists are. Right, it's, right. <clears throat> it's panic time, folks. It's panic. I don't know if those guys, but I'm panicking on their behalf. I, I can know, tell I feel you stressful. because there is just a, it's worth being a spectator yeah. and is actually competing. I'm sure of that. So uh, you know, it's all on now. These last ten minutes, okay. all hell breaks loose, and for these guys, those ten minutes will go like go past like ten seconds. Am I right, Hannah? Absolutely. And right now, they're trying to figure out how to use up the last bit. So they, you can see they're cutting their bones, they're getting those even on display, really making sure that nothing's left in those bins below no. the table, eh? And we've got 263 people watching, and that's probably, um, there's probably more than that, because I'm sure there's more than one person watching in each household. Absolutely, yeah. There's about 40 at Shirley's alone. Oh, I so. reckon we're up to over thousands. <laughs> and I... Well, yeah, it's interesting, and you know, I've been the oldest commentator on the table by a country mile, folks. I can remember uh, the very first Young Butcher of the Year competition I went to, and believe it or not, it was held in a tent uh, in the Auckland showgrounds. Grounds. So that was about 30 years ago, uh, and so look where we are today. We've gone, even without spectators, we've gone from being in a tent to being in a stadium such as this with fantastic technology. And what that technology is able to do is really show off the skills of the products that these young people can produce. Yep. Um, I just want to touch on the five regionals and just sort of thank the um, people that have hosted this. We'll start off uh, from the top, um, Auckland, uh, for skills for work. We uh, wouldn't be able to do it. We're, um, we're having to move to you guys, so thank you very much. In Christchurch, uh, we've got the ARA Institute of Canterbury, Dunedin, we've got the New World City Centre, Waikato, we've got Pack and Save Mill Street, and in Wellington, we had the Well Tech, which I'm just guessing that's Wellington Tech. So thank you very much for that. I've just had I've just had a wop sap come through to me from Simon the Butcher in, in the United Kingdom. He's captain of the English team. Great to hear from you, Simon. I hope you're enjoying the show. And Gianni was also, um, he's sort of been watching as well. So thanks very much. It's good to see the captains from all around the world watching this. So it shows our event is right up there. Okay, guys, um, I'm back down on the floor here watching Brad do his final touches on his chicken. He's looking good. Obviously, James, he's out there doing a fantastic job. He's not far away from finishing. A magnificent looking table right now. Thank you, Ricky. And let's not forget, this is a retail meat New Zealand event. Uh, the event that I talked about, the first one I went to way back uh, so far ago, I don't want to remember, held in a tent. That was a retail meat New Zealand event. So from there to here, uh, we've made leaps and bounds. I guess it's like going from the Model T Ford uh, to the new Ferrari, because this is a Ferrari in anybody's language. Yeah, and for anyone watching at home, definitely take Retail Meet New Zealand and also New Zealand Top Butcher. Uh, and that way we can see what you're doing and how you're following along tonight. So last year's winners were um, Greg Edderton, who was a uh, sharp black, and then also Brad Gillespie um, took, out, took out the competition as well. Yeah, it's always fun to see who the new up-and-coming people are and who are the repeats. Uh, there's definitely a few old, old hands in here as well, some brand yep. newbies. And it seems you... you have five minutes. Don't panic, guys. Leave that to us. We're panicking on the commentator's <laughs> desk. <laughs> it's bloody stressful. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm um, just down on the floor here with Peter, one of our um, legendary um, judges, judges in many a competition. So what have you seen, Pete? What do you say? So legendary, you mean I'm old. That's what I was saying. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I've seen really good um, uh, good talent by everybody. Um, pushed hard, bit of nerves to start with, but they settled into their work rate and got into it. Um, some very good um, skills yeah. being shown today. And uh, obviously, any standouts for you without mentioning names? Yeah, there is a couple. Yeah, it's going to go. It's going to be close. I tell you that, very close. Though. It's a bit right. hard, bit hard to say the standouts without mentioning names. Though. <laughs> I think they're all standouts to be able to make it here. Um, they've um, they're the top of their game, so um, and on their region, so they're all looking pretty good. 
Absolutely. We're uh, under five minutes. You know, it's getting hot down here. Guys are rushing around their tables, cleaning up, moving stuff around, last-minute details. Tickets are going up. Oh, it's getting good down here. It's hot. And the thing is, Ricky, they would have practiced and practiced and practiced, and probably in every practice they finished well within the time. But when the heat oh, of the always. competition comes in, the heat of the battle, this is when it really starts to tell. Absolutely. Yeah, They're the looking nerves, pretty eh? flash down there, looking very nice and clean. Tell you what, the poor cameraman, he's kneeling down, he's getting in there, he's getting close-ups at all this wonderful, amazing Can product. Another... Getting hungry, I think. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. The old parsley, you can't beat it. No, it's all those finishing yeah. touches. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm down here with Maria, and she's literally finished. She's just wiping her table down, getting it all cleaned up, putting all oh, her stuff away. Yeah. She's, yeah. This is, this is where you want to be at this time. Yeah. yeah. So that you can put your tickets up, do your last-minute adjustments to your table, and her table is out of this world um i think the cameraman's looking at it now yeah. so oh, she's about to put yeah, her um, her and last Hannah, minute and Hannah and Ruben, you look across it you you compete on your heart haven't finished and i guess you say take that yeah it definitely makes you definitely makes you, it's a good feeling when you finish first for sure i did say when i um competed when i competed i definitely wasn't finishing first um and it does sort of when you look around and your competitors sort of wiping the table and you're still burning out a chicken, you sort of start to um, get a little bit stressed, but hey, we got there in the end. Hey, just while we're here, guys, and here's a good tip for all you young butchers and apprentices that want to get out and do this competition. If you look at what Maria's doing, she's putting her last minute details, you know, just that little bit of garnishing, it's all about presentation, you know, catching the eye of the judge, making people look at it, you know, and look what she's doing, just colours everywhere. It's just amazing to watch. So there's a tip for you young people that are watching us and want to do this comp. That is how you do it. You give yourself that last few minutes to do the final touch-ups before you throw your tickets up. This is great. And, Ricky, you can guarantee that every one of these competitors, whether they win, lose, or draw tonight, will go home feeling really, really good about themselves because what they've done, they've pushed themselves outside their comfort zone. And in life, that's one of the best things that one can do push yourself outside your comfort zone and you amaze yourself what you can achieve. Just look at that, folks. Just look at that display. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at V's table. He's the same. He's just finishing up cleaning his table down. Um, you can see the cuts he's got up here. Look at that. Immaculate, all straight. Everything's uniform. You know, uh, these guys are apprentices. Um, it's just amazing. Look at this. I love that. You've got the bacon wrapped around it. It's all plaited. Look at the colours in there. The sirloin. A bit of wine going up, those beautiful burger patties and capsicum. One this is amazing. Minute remaining. You heard one that, minute. guys. You heard that. One minute. 60 seconds, 59 seconds. All right, it's getting hot. Um, Keith um, from Ireland um, put a shout out. Um, he's, uh, he's watching all the way over from there. G'day, Keith. Hey, Keith. So what happens when the gun goes, Ricky? Do they just have to step away from the tables? What happens? Pretty much most of them just drop their arms and want to cry, to be fair, because uh, you've, you've finally <laughs> done it. Um <laughs> We've got 30 seconds. I'll be doing the countdown soon. You're going to see all the rush. Um, hopefully, if the cameraman can scan around the room, you'll see these guys running around now doing their last minute. Here we go. There's one guy in the Masters Butchers. He's been taking photos. <laughs> Here we go. All right. That's great. That's fantastic. The cutting test is now complete. Let's hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back with the interviews and an in-depth look at the display tables. See you soon. Cheers. Good work, bro. Hi, David here, Chief Executive of New Zealand Pork. At New Zealand Pork, we've been busy on behalf of the industry to encourage people to purchase New Zealand Pork and support local. A few weeks ago, we launched a new website full of great recipes and resources. Take a look at pork.co.nz. Tonight, we're proud to support the Young Butcher of the Year Best Pork Product Award. 
Best of luck to everyone who's competing and congratulations to the winners from New Zealand Pork. Cabernet Foods congratulate all competitors for the high level of workmanship and creative flair demonstrated. It is humbling to see and meet with young butchers aspiring to continue and provide initiative in this great industry to the consumers of the world. We applaud Retail Meat New Zealand for bringing this great competition together and all the sponsors, organisers and judges involved. Cabernet Foods and our farmers are proud suppliers of guilt-free beef, pork and lamb to the tray. Best regards to you all, Brian Everton. Hi folks, we're at Table 1, Lehigh Takeri from Gisborne. Uh, we've just finished, as you know, so um, uh, Lehigh, congratulations, mate. I know it's not easy. How do you feel? Oh, it's a bit nerve-wracking. Um, yeah, yes, this is my first time. Um, yeah, it was, the nerves were pretty high. The heart was pumping. But yeah, had a good time. You know, um, looks like there's some good talent out there, which I'm keen to go around and have a look at all their tables. So, yeah. Hopefully I'll be back for another, another year. So. Yeah. so just take us through some of the products you've done. They look pretty good to me. Um, yeah, um, over here we have uh, lamb noisette, which is um, stuffed with, um, we have spinach and cabin beer cheese. Um, over here we have a lamb Mediterranean crumbed rump. And over here we have um, some uh, lamb mini roasts, which is stuffed with apricot, apricot and macadamia nut. Um, over here we have also the same stuffing, but um, stuffed with lamb leg steaks. Uh, we've got over here we have... Um, a beef trout roast, which has got uh, pistachio nut and um, sun-dried tomatoes. Um, over here we have um, boneless lamb shoulder roast. With um, over here is we've got uh, cranberry and and um, chestnut stuffing. And just over there we have a bit of a beef swirl. And every, everything else is pretty much straightforward. I mean, yeah, I didn't get to finish my table what I wanted to do, but. Yeah, like I said, the nerves are pretty high. And yeah, did you did you find it in the countdown? The time pressures oh, started to get. Yeah, it, it just went. The time just went so bloody fast. You know, as soon as they said one hour to go, and then next minute it was thirty minutes. Next minute it was fifteen, then five, and then eight. So oh well, maybe next time. Mate, well done. I'm sure everyone everyone at Evans is very proud of you, and we're very proud to to host you up in Auckland, and we really appreciate you going. Go for it. Right, folks, we'll now move on to uh, round to table two. Lua McDonald, if I can find him. Um, Lua, brother, how are you, mate? Uh, well done. Hot, sweaty, hot, sweaty. Um, no, just relieved, really. And the thing is, did you enjoy the competition? Was it everything you thought it would be? Oh, I've been in a few, but it's always the same, just um, good fun. Good fun, that's all, you know, just meet new people and just have fun, yeah. And how did you find the time? Is it, is, does the time get you into the end, or did you think you managed that well? Uh, I'd say 50-50 on that one, <laughs> no comments. But, yeah, no, nah, it's, um, yeah, it's just sometimes you lose track of time, and then you just zone out, and then you don't realise until someone yells out, like, 30 minutes, and then, you you know, you're like, oh, better pick up the speed. But, no, nah, it's, it's always something to uh, learn from. Just picking up speed and just getting there, really. Good on you. And Lou, just take us through some of the products you made. Uh, yep. So basically, uh, first one here, we've got um, just a lamb saddle boneless. So I've got inside a black pudding and a bit of Danish um, salami. 
with the barbecue plum um, stuffing. Uh, this one here, so basically, I learned about this cut on YouTube, to be honest, as well being free. I'm, every day I'm still learning something as a butcher, so apparently this is equivalent to, um, they call it the Terrace Major, so it's equivalent to the eye fillet. So um, just wrapped in bacon and little bits of cream cheese. Uh, just got basic uh, lamb cutlets. Um, this is a garlic uh, steak pepper glaze. Um, here I've got just a lattice pie, so just a bit of lamb, capsicum, spinach, and just uh, beetroot and caramelized onion uh, hummus at the bottom. Um, here I call these just lamb stickers, so basically just eggplant. Uh, you got your lamb rump in there sliced, um, cheddar cheese, uh, tomato relish, as well as uh, tomatoes on top uh, with the core fat around it. Um, just got basic roast here, so just got a basic uh, stuffed uh, covery lamb leg. Um, got a shoulder uh, cushion. Uh, spinach, mozzarella cheese inside, and uh, hummus um, dip inside um, with oriental on top. Uh, this one just a blade roast, so I just got spinach, mozzarella, and I got a basil and pesto, pesto um, based in there with a bit of um, bacon on top. Um, just a bit of Moroccan um, Cajun uh, lamb kebabs with uh, paneer cheese, uh, lamb rack with uh, mint and golden crumb uh, with. Uh, hummus and butternut pumpkin underneath it, um, just basic uh, lamb flap spirit. This full quarter of lamb looks cool, just talk us about this. Uh, so this is just a semi bone lamb shoulder, um, just with, um, I honestly don't know how to pronounce this bacon, it's, it's equivalent to prosciutto, but yeah. And uh, inside I've just got a pine nut with uh, mixed fruits um, and a bit of, uh, what do you call it, uh, spinach and feta uh, dip mixed through the um, mixed through the stuffing as well. No, well done, mate. We're proud of you. Thank you. Table three, here we go, folks. Brendan Kemp, there you are, Brendan. Come over here, mate. Come over here, come around. Looks, this looks pretty impressive. Uh, how do you feel? Bugged. <laughs> She's been a long day. We are on the go at four o'clock this morning, so it's just, yeah, we're from the deep south, so she's been a long day. I know you're from the deep south because I can see the bottle of spades there. <laughs> True, mate. True Southlander. So how did you find it? Did, did, did it all go according to plan from your point of view or were there some little hiccups on the way? Just talk us through it. Well, first first day she was um, pretty cruisy, but then I sort of just thought I was going all right, and then they said 10 minutes to go, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> but now we got there and it's just, yeah. And you've, how much training have you been doing to, towards this? I mean, you just can't turn up on the day oh, and, and do this. And I know you you work for New World, so you've got to do your day job as well. So now that you've been putting a lot of time into it. Yeah, no, it's been pretty hard, but um, I've got a good crew at home. Um, my boss is here, Jason, he's here with me. So good support team. Um, probably not as much practice as I'd wanted, but, you know, at the end of the day, your number one job comes first and we've got to get meat out in that cabinet. So... Um, yeah, no, we got a, gave it a good crack, and um, yeah, look out next year. So just talk us through some of the stuff you've done here, Brendan, just so we get a bit, tell us your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, some of them are sort of, a couple of ideas I've had in my head for a long time, like so the old uh, trout with the pit of prunes and pistachio nuts, and then I've always wanted to do a triple cheeseburger, um, and then it's just a matter of, because let's face it, beef banjo's probably one of the worst cuts <laughs> you could be doing, so... It's just, you've got to put the old creative thinking cap on and just, yeah, come up with different casseroles and goulets and meatloafs. Like, we've got a, um, just got a brand new um, bourbon, bourbon meatloaf it's just come in with uh, mixture. We've only had it in the shop about four weeks. It's a beautiful, um, got a really nice smell and a deep woody taste. So I've done them into a meatloaf with some mixed veggies and panko crust on top, so beautiful, beautiful. Well, mate, the person who brought this table is going to have a great few uh, few meals coming up over the, never few, the next few weeks. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Brendan. No great job. Great to have you on board. Cheers. This is... Here we're going. Table number... Four. Five. Four. Four. Delmond, of course. I know you before, brother. How are you? Well done. Well done. So just uh, let's come and have a look. This is impressive, mate. You've done it. You've done a great job. You've, how do you feel now that it's all over? Oh, um, it's great, great, you know, great opportunity to be here. And I, I didn't think, you know, um, you know, I would have finished. To quite be honest. Yeah. 
So, so the time was okay. You were, you you weren't under too much pressure at the end. I was actually I was at the end. Last five minutes I was at the end. So I came. I'm prepared. I came with a plan B, just in case I run out of time. There's always a shortcut, or there's always another product that I can leave it out and uh, do an easy one and put a bit of candy on. Plan B, that's a great idea. Plan B, great idea. Look, just Delman, talk us through some of these products so uh, we can um, we can get uh, like learn a bit a bit more of what your thinking was. Okay. Um, all the stuff over here is pretty much all um, you know, plain cut. There's a few stuff that added value, um, like the kofta's. You know, you got the beef kofta's over there. You got the loin over here with the uh, Spanish uh, chorizo and. Uh, and spinach, yep. and um, you got the top side over here, um, butterfly the ink tight, and um, stuff with um, uh, spinach and uh, feta cheese, and wrapping cold fat. And over here we got the, my my favorite, which is the shin shin on the bone, oh, you know, slow yeah. cook, and it's marinated in plum sauce and added with the. Uh, uh, Mango uh, salsa. So, so. Yeah, that's good. That, the good colour contrast there it looks. Yeah, uh, I think it will really complement will complement yeah, yeah. that, that marrow anyway. Yeah, sure. Well, that's very impressive, and you've got your nice wooden displays in the back that just give it a bit of elevation. And also, you got this uh, beautiful red coal fat. Yeah. Know, even the church arts. Yeah. Did yeah. it come like this? I told him I marinate. I, I put it in uh, colouring food colour. Right. And mate, you think you're going to win? Hey, oh no, I don't think I'll just come and give my beast, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll Congratulations. See. Thank, Thank you. you sir. All the best to you. Okay, well, we're at uh, Rob, Lee's, Rob Lee's table, number number six. Rob's from uh, the Walkworth Butchery, uh, just north of Auckland. He, he's not here at the moment, but here he is now. Mate, where the hell have you been? Uh, checking everyone else out. So, uh, hey, this looks fantastic, Rob. You've obviously given a lot of thought into the display. Uh, it, it's it's really quite innovative. How have you, how have you enjoyed the competition? Uh, the competition was good. Uh, build up, not so much. Uh, yeah, the first hour was better than the second, for sure. Okay, so what went right, what went wrong? Um, nah, it all went good. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it's just hot and fast. And how about the timing? Was, was, was the time as you expected, or did you not have quite the time you would have liked? Uh, well, I never finished on time in my practice, so I was, <laughs> I was always going to be up against it. So, yeah, going around, it's, yeah, simplicity's the key, I think. And just tell us the, 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 the theme behind your backdrop here. Does it have any significance? For sure. Yeah, this has all come out of my shop. So this is all on display every day. Uh, this is our source stand. Uh, this is a 1912 photo of my shop, Walkworth Butchery. It used to be stubs for like 100 years. Um, these are sort of changing photos of it there. Burnt down, rebuilt. Uh, yeah, just still, still going. Um, but yeah, we try and. Robert, let, let just talk through some of the products that you produced here today. There's some pretty, okay. pretty impressive looking stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. So on the like the lamb, I just did a couple of rubs. Uh, did like a madras, um, authentic spice. Uh, same with the merguez, which is. Uh, normally only in, in a sausage with the same um, seasoning, it's just used as a rub. It's actually really nice with a bit of uh, mango uh, chutney and yogurt. Uh, I've done a steak royale, which is usually a, a meal in a pie. Um, yeah, otherwise just tried to keep it pretty basic. Yeah. In, your, in your own shop, how, how many butchers do you have working in the store? Uh, there's five of us in the shop, uh, three boys, two girls. That's, uh, and you have you have meat helpers as well. Uh, that's us. We're yeah, boys, butchers. Yeah. And are, the you, are you a boss. seven day a week business? Nah, or? five five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah. So Saturday morning only. Till two. Yeah, and then, and even in the peak season and the some of the festive season, you still still stick two, to that. Two. Yeah, we're pretty good at it. Yeah, get out on time. Yeah. 
All right, mate. Uh, great stuff. Congratulations. We can't but wait. We must wait now and see who actually takes it out. Let's hear more from our sponsors and we'll be right back to check out the Enscode Food Apprentices. Hey, welcome back. We're just going to do a few interviews and see how the apprentices found the competition. So, hey James, how did that go for you? Yeah, pretty good. I found uh, I ran out of time, so the time thing was hard. There's a lot of pressure when you're putting all this together onto the table and trying to make it all look nice. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. That's good. That's the main thing, really, is that you had fun. Would you do it again? Yeah, I'd have another go. All the prep goes into it, but it is quite competitive and it's quite fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. Can you talk me through your table a bit? So what's that? That immediately grabs my attention. So yeah, that's a pumpkin stuffed with pork and beef diced and Moroccan sauce. Um, to cook that, you'd fry off the meat first and then put it all together and then bake it. Apart. Oh, nice. So you eat the pumpkin with the filling. Pull it apart and then eat it from the inside. Oh, that sounds quite good. Um, and then what do you have in your burger patties? Those look quite tasty. Uh, Parmesan cheese chopped chives and barbecue sauce. Oh yeah, do you make any of this kind of stuff at work? Not like this, no, we do volume more than uh, gourmet. Fair enough, there's both lots, lots of different steps to do butchery. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, well, what's your favorite cut on the table? Uh, mine would have to be the rolled shoulder that we got as a mystery cut, stuffed with capsicum and mushroom, or my two meat roast here, which is beef and pork rolled together with a Tuscan seasoning. Oh yeah, is that this one here? Nice. And how would you cook that? Uh, in the oven at about 140, 150, about half an hour. And the the seasoning over top sort of stops it drying up, and the pork cooks faster than the beef, so you're still going to get a nice medium rare sirloin in the middle. Cool. Do you do much cooking at home? Yeah, I do quite a bit of cooking at home. I quite like experimenting with different flavors. Cool. You can definitely tell. You seem very comfortable with, with your different cuts. Awesome. What do you have in that chicken pillow over there? Uh, that is mushroom and garlic butter stuffed with caramelized onion on top. I think it's a yeah relish on top. Cool. Um, if you had to summarize the table, how, how, what would you say? How would you describe it? Mm, a high range, I guess. There's all sorts of different stuff on here, different colors. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, congratulations. Glad to have you competing and hope to see you at the after party. I'll see you later. We're going on to the next. How you going? You ready to have a little chat? <laughs> so first of all, how you feeling? Um, pretty good after we finished. Yeah, I was um, nerves, but got over and done with it, so. I should, have, I should have announced who this is. This is V. Ook, in case you haven't remembered him from the previous two hours. Um, fantastic display. Uh, is there a hero cut that you would say out of, out of the display? Uh, it will be my sandwich cut. So it will be the sirloin sandwich cut right here. That's real, real primo. Tried it myself, cooked it, came out real nice. How did you cook it? I baked them. Baked them, so medium heat at 150, 25, 30 minutes. You get a medium real. So it's real good. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. Yum. Um, what are you doing? What are these guys over here? I got cream, um, sweet and sour cheese, ham, spinach, um, dried tomato, cheddar cheese on the side. So yeah, that's a real classic one too. <laughs> nice. Everything looks very tasty. If you kind of had to sum up the table, like, uh, were you going for any specific theme or any idea, or just kind of what what you thought tasted good? Well, I went for orange, I mean lemon for chicken, uh, kiwi fruit for beef, and orange for pork. Pretty much that's what it was. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's some really nice garnishing. It looks really clean and tidy. Um, how did you prepare for this competition? What kind of practicing did you do? Well, um, had to take work off t um, time of work and like getting, um, well, thanks to t uh, work anyway, they give me time of work to practice for this. So it was good, yeah. Did you, how many practices did you do? We had a week. Yeah, a week from the last one. So say six, six training before we came in, so it was good. Wow, man, that sounds that sounds like quite a bit of work, especially taking annual leave to do this. That's quite no. Yeah, it was during work. During work hours. Okay, cool, awesome. Well, it's because you're a pretty good boss, I think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon. Uh, cool. And what's uh, what's next? Future competitions? Maybe future sharp black? What's the goal? Um, one day we're hoping to um, own my own butcher shop. So yeah, that's what I'm working towards. So hopefully, yep, winning these will. Be a big achievement in life. So, yeah. Thank you. Get more publicity? Awesome. Well, congratulations. Excellent work. Cool. Yes. Hello, Maria. How are you going? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Well, thank you. How, how do you feel? Oh, amazing. We finish and uh, it's a, an amazing experience. So I feel relieved and yes. Awesome. I feel like that smile definitely tells it all. You don't you seem don't seem stressed in the slightest, but you were also very calm in the competition and you did finish first. So that must be a good feeling. Uh, yes, uh, it's a kind of relief, <laughs> as I said, and and you still have time to clean up and do put your last details on. And so, yeah. Was there any special preparation you did that you think helped you to finish with enough time to properly clean down and everything? Yes, I, I tried to organize all my stuff in the order that I was doing the cuts. And uh, also I was taking all the stuff off that I wasn't going to use anymore from my table. So therefore, at the end, you have less stuff on your table and more easy to clean it up. Yes, and then you have that time to do your garnishing and just the final details at the end. Yeah, sounds like kind of how I would work. Maybe it's a maybe it's a woman thing. I think it might be a little 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 organization going on there. It's good, very good. Is there any um, is there any cut that you particularly want to talk about or you're particularly proud of? Yes, I I do like my beef sirloin with caviar peels. Uh, actually, caviar peels I made myself. I learned how to make them. And um, from my garden, I get so the, the uh, I forgot the name, <laughs> um, basil, which gives a really sweetness. And the caviar peels, when, we, when you eat it, you just explode in your mouth, and it's just a nice feeling. So it's a cut that I really enjoy making and eating. Wow, it sounds delicious. Um, how would you cook that? Um, it's quite easy. Uh, we got a, a prosciutto that we give the flavor, and so it's just about three minutes and a half each side. If you like around, around medium rare, or four minutes if you like well done, or it's uh, for me is a. Yeah, you're Brazilian. You don't eat well done, mate, I don't think. No, I know. <laughs> yes, I do like medium rare, and so. Awesome. This is your, this is your second time um, making it to the final, is that correct? Yes, yes. Did you find this one easier or harder than last time? Uh, it's always hard, and it doesn't matter how many we do. And uh, that's all these live things that's the new, so it gives that feeling, the anxious, and you, know what, you don't know what's going to happen. But you're still feeling the same as the first time, so. Just, just as hard, same, same day, or same, not really the same, just as, just as difficult. Yeah, it is difficult, yes, to control your emotions and yeah, that's the hard part of it. Well, you could have fooled us. You looked very calm. So congratulations. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you later on. So Cheers. All righty. I'll just have a little uh, quick reminder that the award ceremony is coming up shortly. So uh, I've got a few more interviews to go around and then um, Stay tuned for the awards because that will be coming up. Don't don't run away. Cool. All right. Up next, uh, who we got? Jacob. 
How you going, Jacob? Yeah, not bad. Happy it's over. I should remember you, Jake the Snake. That's, a, that's an easy one to remember. Yeah. I've been told not to bring it up again. I know. I know. I have too. Sorry. That's my bad. All right. Cool. So, how are you feeling about the table? Yeah, pretty good. Um, would have liked another couple of minutes at the end just for garnishes, but yeah, I'm happy it all got completed. Yeah, absolutely. So you got all your cuts on the table? Yep. Cool. Well, it looks pretty good, i got to say. Um, what was the general theme for the table? Did you have one? No, I didn't really have a theme. I just wanted a bit of colour in there and variety and got um, the best fizzy in the world. It's called Fox and Fizz. <laughs> nice. Bit of shout out to back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. What, what's your favourite cut on the table? Um, I, I do love a stuffed porterhouse. Got a bit of mushroom and garlic butter in there. Um, that was quite tasty. Fossey rolls would go down a treat. Or the beef porterhouse parmigiana. Yeah, definitely. And what do you got? What's in this one here? Uh, it's beef wellington. So I've got a little bit of cracked pepper, pate, mushroom, and I fill it. Cool. Do you do many of these cuts at work? Uh, yeah. We sell that. Yeah, most of it. All of it. Yep, yeah, except. Nice. You're able to do a bit of practice, and, and quite a bit of practice, you reckon? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so what was your preparation uh, training like? Um, so. It was up to me if I wanted to practice after work, so I'd try a couple of times a week, and yeah, everyone was keen to help me out and show support, so it was good. Yeah. Awesome. Now, the big thing is, do you think you'll do it again? Yeah, I'm keen to do it again. It's just a start. You'll see me back. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. That's what... So I know that uh, New World Foxen has a pretty good track record for apprentices, so do you feel like you've got some, some boots to fill there? Yeah, definitely. So I'll be back to um, make everyone proud and shit. It's good. Cool. Well, it seems like you've got quite a good following already. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, I like to see here, one thing I'm always looking for, like, in when I've been a judge, was, you know, utilization of bones. That's quite cool. What do you do? Are you using bones at the shop, or is this something you're just trying to make sure you use, that, use everything? Uh, yeah, we sell bones at the shop, even soup bones or to the dog bones. Different prices, depending, depending on the meat left on it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's good. It doesn't look like, um, well, it doesn't look like anything went to waste, which is awesome. Thank you. Nah. Cool. Well, congratulations, and we'll catch you later on. Cool. Awesome. All right. Here we go, Blair. How's it going? Not bad. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How do you feel? <laughs> Glad it's over, really. <laughs> it's always that bit of relief, eh? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yep, yep, yeah. How do you feel being the young, knowing you're the youngest guy in the room? Uh, don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fine about it, pretty much. Just don't think about it? Uh, not really, no. Nah. What's the goals for the future? Uh, get better. Yep, do more and get better. Yep, then um, just improve in my work every day, pretty much. So. Keep going. Sounds, sounds good. Did you, I like that, that pig. That's pretty cool there in the center of the table. Did you go for any theme when you were doing your table? Um, not really, just... Um, sort of just lighten up the whole table and that's pretty much it. Make everything shine, make the meat shine. Absolutely, there's some really nice garnishes you have going on. I quite like that, that pork and apple. That looks really tasty. How would you cook that? Um, just put it in the oven, maybe wrap it in some bacon, 45 minutes, chuck it in 180, come out nice and crispy, slice it up. Yeah, it's quite good. Put a bit of bone in there for some extra flavour. Yeah, and that bone's really clean, I have to say. I reckon the judges are going to like the side of that for sure. Awesome. Any uh, particular cut that you that you quite like? Um, the sirloin and blue cheese and spinach. Oh yeah, that one right there. Nice. Steaks as well. Steaks over there as well. So. Yeah. Do you sell stuff like this at the shop? Yes. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. What was your practice regime like? Oh, every week, a couple of days a week. Yep, definitely. Just timing myself and beating myself, getting getting it better. So yeah, that's pretty much. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you, thank and uh, yeah, we'll catch you later on. Thank Cool. Cheers. Last but not least, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Relaxed. Glad it's over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. After getting called up two weeks ago, it's been, uh, been a good experience. Two weeks. I can't imagine. Like, yeah. Wow. Cool. Did you have, like, um, a lot of this stuff, is it from things that you did at regionals? Uh, yeah, a lot of it. it most of it's actually from regionals. Um, a few of it uh, I've just added to it. Um, 
and done a few extra, but yeah, most of it is regionals. So with only two weeks knowing you're, you're coming up to Auckland, um, what was your training regime like? Um, I didn't really have one, to be honest. Um, I took what I did in regionals, remembered all the advice, I went through all my books, um, but I didn't really have much time to practice. But Fair enough, we're coming up to Christmas, we're all busy as, eh? <laughs> you sure are, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, do you have any, I mean, that, that cut right in the centre there really strikes me, but do you have any cuts that particularly you're excited about? Uh, yeah, the one you just mentioned, actually, the um, Eiffel on the Bone. I've tried it a few times, and it's my favourite cut there. Beautiful. What do you have in there? Uh, so it's a sun-dried tomato and olive chutney with capsicum and cool fat wrapped around it. Nice. Delicious. Cool. And how would you cook that? Uh, so I'd cook that 200 degrees uh, in the oven till it's 55 degrees internal, which is about 45 minutes. Yeah. So you do a bit of cooking at home? Uh, a wee bit, yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Cool. Well, hey, thank you so much. Awesome work. Really, really, I can't wait to hear what the judges have to say. So, um, yeah, enjoy and we'll catch you later on, okay? Cool. Thank you. Now we're just going to jump over to Ruben. Thank you very much. Right, here we are with um, young Brad, who um, we've been watching quite a while over the years. He's been competing in... As always, there's always sausage on the table, which I like to watch um, do, because um, I think that sort of adds a little bit of more of your skill. Um, can you give us a little bit of a rundown on how your, how your afternoon or evening went? Uh, so to start with, it sort of went pretty slow, and then half an hour in, the time just flew just like that, and I nearly ran out of time, but I managed to get all my products done, which I'm stoked, and still got to make my sausies, which I always love doing, and... Yeah, no, it was a good afternoon. Um, looking at your table here, what's what's your favourite um, sort of product that you sort of like? I'm sort of my eyes are just going to these. I'm just thinking, man, I just love to have some friends over and put the old um, pesero in a porterhouse um, on the grill with some nice um, blue cheese. But what's your favourite product, and how would you cook it? Uh, mine's definitely the stuffed sirloin with blue cheese in it. Um, it's yeah, simple, but the way it's displayed, we sell a lot of them at work just because they look different and I guess customers buy with their eyes and yeah, the missus doesn't like sirloin steaks, so, I mean, doesn't like blue cheese, so I get to eat all six steaks to myself, so I'm pretty wrapped about that. That's, that's pretty good, and I'd have to say, um, I sort of, we did the beetroot um, beef patty as well at work and um, it's, it's actually a really good combination because it, it makes the uh, meat not dry as that as much um, and, um, and the colour sort of comes through but it's looking pretty good there Brad um, just this pork mini roast which is wrapped in core fat what's your sort of what's your sort of take on that and how do you, how so do you cook it so I've put a Mexican jalapeno sausage meal in the middle which keeps it nice and moist and the core fat keeps it even moister and yeah it's the missus' favourite, so I had to make that one. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Um, I'm loving everything. Everything. If I've, I've judged this before, and I'd, I've sort of looked around the tables, and, and it would be hard again. All your tying looks all good, all nice and neat and even. So, um, well done, Brad. And um, you can. Uh, thanks, Mum, for letting me use your flowers. I didn't ask to use them, but um, yeah, I'm sure you'll be wrapped that they got used or. You might be angry, I don't know, see how we go. You pick those from your mum's garden. <laughs> she does good roses. Okay, hey. thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, we've got James. We've got James Smith here, um, a fellow member of um, the Hell of Sharp Blacks. Um, well done, James. It's um, a stellar of a performance as, um, as usual. What's your, um, give me two products that, you've, um, that you're proud of and, sort of, and how would you cook them? What's your number one standing out? Um, that's a tough one, mate. I've got a few favourites. Hey, my pork and beef truffles are probably one of my favourites. Um, that one's a good kind of 30 minute, 180 kind of jobby, standard, um, with a little buffalo sauce injector. So once we cook those up, we just take our injector out and uh, spray that over the top of the, the cooked product. Um, 
Then I've got a few others. I mean, I, like, I love a good beef sirloin roast. I've done a, um, so it's a herb and, herb and garlic paste that I've put on the top of it with a red onion um, and rosemary leaves under it and covered in cool fat. So, yeah, good reverse sear product, that one. Sear it nice and hot, get that um, cool fat nice and crackly and then finish it in the oven or finish it on the barbecue for all the barbecue lovers. So how did you find the competition, this new, um, rather than all your screaming fans in front of you, we've had a couple of these um, lovely cameras um, looking us down on us. Um, I was the, sitting on the, uh, as the commentator and it looked really co- looked pretty cool out here. It sort of looked like we are a little bit um, on a film set, uh, which you're not shy of the camera. So um, what did you like? Do you like this or do you like having the fans screaming at you? Mate, honestly, I, I probably don't even notice half of them, mate. Eh? I mean, I didn't, I didn't pay much attention. Um, I've kind of hit down, but up the whole time. So yeah, she's she's a she's a bit of a. She, I was sweating five minutes in, so I didn't really have much time to look around. <laughs> yeah, well, you've done an absolutely amazing job here, as per usual. And um, I'd hate to be um, the judges today. It's a lot easier holding the mic and sort of talking about it. So um, well done, and um, we'll see you later. What's that? Right, we have got Taylor Wiley, who I owe an apology for. I'm sorry. I've, yeah, I'm sorry. That's why I'm a butcher. I can't read or write um, like most of us in the trade. No. <laughs> um, but I do like your mo. It's obviously been going a little bit longer than um, November. Movember. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I'm sort of trying to catch up. Um, How did it go? It look, it's looking good, nice and clean and... Sort of under the pump, the bandsaw sort of bugged me up at the start and I had a bit of stress there, but I was just happy to get everything finished in the end day. Yep. So you got all the products out there you sort of wanted to and yeah. and um, you weren't sort of thrown too much off? Yeah, no, not too bad. Yeah, I just, I literally, I think I had like 10 minutes left to do my lamb, my lamb and my chicken and I got it out, so. It's so. good. <laughs> What's, uh, what's your number one product and how would you cook it, like taking it home? What's your favourite here? Um, probably the pork rump with wasabi butter, probably one of my favourites. Um, yeah, chuck it in the oven, 180 for about 40 minutes and yeah, just baste it with all the butter as it goes and then gives it that awesome flavour at the end. And the wasabi butter, that's really, that's quite a good um, twist on it. I haven't actually heard of that before, but um, probably go quite nice on steak as well, I'd say. Some over here as well with the Philip Mignons. Ah, there we go. That looks absolutely splendid, and um, I'm loving your sort of colour contrast with the greens and um, sort of makes the meat pop out. Yeah, awesome. Thanks very much. Cool, well done. Catch you later. <clears throat> Who have we got here? Briar and Pink. We've got to jump on this side over here. Right, she's pretty good. As again, I'd sort of, it's, the judging would be um, very hard there. We've got so many products here and different sort of, um, different like just sort of looking at them all. What's your favorite product on the table? And uh, favorite product on the table would probably be my chicken double breast roast. So it's two boneless chicken breasts stuffed with sage and onion stuffing, topped with cranberry sauce and wrapped in streaky bacon. That's really good. And um, how, how was the competition today? Like, you sort of, what did you sort of think of having the camera on you and were you able to maybe pull out the cleanest bones to sort of win that sort of prize or what do you reckon? Definitely don't think so. It was my first competition so I definitely wasn't going for the cleanest bones. I was just trying to get all my product on the table and actually finished. Um, it's my first real competition so I was just really stoked with how it all turned out. Well, for your first cab off the rank, you've done a pretty good job here, mate. It's, um, it, it's looking really well done. Nice and presentated. Love all your farm animals. About a dozen stores to find those. You'll find dinosaurs everywhere, but farm animals are a different story. <laughs> That's it. That's sort of not on the, on the scope of kids these days. Oh, thank you very much for that. Cameron Fletcher. Good, mate. Good. How did it go? Uh, yeah, I'm very proud of what I've uh, put out. You know, I had a few bumps and hiccups along the way, as you do any time you compete, but um, yeah, I'm really happy with what I've made and what's, what the final product looks like. So. No, you've done, you've done a great job here, mate. I mean, A, firstly, to be able to, be able to stand up here and to be able to compete against everyone else, you've, um, you've beaten a fair few. Yeah. Um, 
it's looking good. It's nice and clean. It's fresh. Um, what was your sort of what was one of your biggest obstacles that you've sort of had to come across um, getting here? Uh, it's just been, you know, sort of the the whole idea of it all. It's such a big thing to just you know be up here with the people that are so inspiring in the trade and people that really make me want to go further and push myself harder. And um, yeah, it's just the biggest thing has just been sort of knowing that I'm being mentioned with them and all that sort of thing. So yeah. Hey, if you don't put your foot forward, you're never going to know. It's a sort of, it's my parents sort of, you can either be a turtle and keep pulling your head in and out, or you can actually put it out and if it gets chopped off, it does. But you've done, you've done yourself proud here, mate. There's a lot of good products. Um, how would you sort of cook these, uh, the old mushroom burgers? So they just go in the oven. I'll do, do a bit of oil across the top of them, maybe a bit of butter as well for a bit of colour. And they're just in there for, you know, 15 to 20 minutes at 180. And, yeah, they'll come out. The mushrooms will be nice and soft and the beef will hopefully be medium rare all the way through. So. Sounds like good. I actually got an email from a customer asking about um, keto sausages. But um, I might have to start looking at doing the old field mushroom burgers because that's going to fit right into their um, scope of food. Yeah, well, thank you very much there, and um, good luck. And, um, yeah, you've done as well. Mrs. Weller, how are we? Splendid as always. It was sort of quite easy. I was sort of, you were about the, one of the only ones I could sort of watch um, placing stuff from where I was sitting over there. Um, oh, there's so many different products here. I just want you to, I just want you to pick out two products that that you, that are new to you and for this competition yeah uh, so I have the pork roulade over here which is quite a new one yeah so that one right there um, I'm not very good when it comes to my pork products which is why I thought I'd try something like that which has a lot more color and texture to it uh, so that's probably one of my favorite ones and then I believe my other one is actually the fillet on the bone I did that in my first year but I did it as an unstuffed product, so I just kind of feel like it's it's changed as I have as well. So, yeah. It's pretty. Um, it's pretty good. We were thinking of different ideas for um, the sharp blacks, and I think we might have to take some photos just um, for our competition eventually once we get over there. Go. Yep, it was his. <laughs> um, what was the? What was your biggest sort of? Um, sort of obstacle you sort of felt with in this competition was it um, not having people here to cheer you on and having the camera in your face or um, yeah tell us like did you enjoy this kind of thing having the this man here peering down on you uh, yeah I actually did enjoy it it just seemed like a lot less pressure which was awesome I also enjoyed the fact that it wasn't all mystery cuts this year so that was fantastic um, I did struggle a little bit as I said before I hour into it I was still going on with my beef and I had an hour to do my other three cuts but somehow magically it turned out all right. Well I'd have to say if we've, um, it doesn't look like you struggled at all um, I think you've done extremely well and I'd, um, I think you're up there with the best and um, it was a pleasure to judge you over in Ireland and it's been a pleasure to watch you um, compete here today and we are now going to be heading to the award ceremony in a bit. <laughs> now we need to hear more from our sponsors and have a, the last look at the regionals and we'll be back to start the awards ceremony. And that concludes our grand final for this evening. I would like to commend all of our competitors today on a tremendous effort. For the Alto Young Butchers and Ansco Food Butcher Apprentices, it's been amazing you watching you work your way through the regional competitions and being here today at the grand final, putting all of your practice and new skills into play and doing your absolute best out there has been awesome to watch. For the Pure South Master Butchers, you have really wowed us today with your desire to push those boundaries with your innovation and creativity, and I think all of our competitors deserve a huge round of applause today. So I would like to acknowledge our sponsors who made the event possible. Alto, the principal sponsor of the Young Butcher of the Year and provider of the meat trays. Anne's Co. Foods, the principal sponsor of the Butcher Apprentice of the Year and provider of the beef. Pure South, the principal sponsor of the Master Butcher of the Year and provider of the lamb. 
Beef and Lamb New Zealand, Competence, Dunningham's for supplying the equipment, Heller's, Tegel for supplying the chicken, and Wilson Hallaby for supplying the beef, pork, and lamb. Now, before we get into the competition awards, I would just like to call up Rod Slater to award this year's Christie Award winner. Oh, I got my mic. Good evening, everybody, and a big welcome to everybody that's watching, both our special guests here and around the world. The Christie Award is a lifetime achievement award given annually to members of the ministry who have gone above and beyond the call of duty in their efforts to assist and do their best for the industry. The award was created in honour of Jeff Christie, a butcher and a tutor of trainee butchers in polytechnics whose passion for his trade was tireless. Jeff was one of the very first to recognise the need for added value and the need for people and butchers to learn cooking skills, something that my generation certainly didn't have. In fact, we used to tell customers how they should do it and we really didn't have a clue what we were talking about. But times have changed. Um, this will be the 11th awarding of this award and it's had some most illustrious butchers of New Zealand award in the past. Just to name two, Sir Peter Leach and Todd Haller. Ladies and gentlemen, the 11th recipient of the Christie Award has been involved in the meat industry all his working life. Starting out as a clean-up boy, he has over time progressed through to management, whereby he has been instrumental in mentoring and training staff and apprentices. His own unique personal approach and knowledge are respected not only by his own team, but also those in the wider meat industry. The 11th recipient is a role model and leader, having put himself out there entering and succeeding in industry competitions to inspire his team to better themselves. The recipient's history within the meat industry has been all about active participation and collaboration at the grassroots level. The, the recipient has done some incredible work in regards to introducing and mentoring young people into the industry. So, so successful has that been that a number of his trainees have gone on to win national industry awards. The 11th recipient has been an Alto Butcher of the Year winner, a Sharp Black, and a World Butchers Challenge judge. And the recipient is Ricky Kerry Kerry. <laughs> He's usually a man of few words, but uh, tonight I'm sure he won't be a man of few words. Ricky, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I didn't expect that. I was standing there listening and talking. I know that guy. Um, <laughs> wow, well, uh, this is actually a true honour. Um, uh, as he said, some of the names that have uh, won this award previously, uh, great people in our industry. Um, the guys that I actually hold in high regard, you know, um, these guys uh, got our industry going many years ago and kept it going. Um, and standing here today, I really didn't expect this. All. You guys kept this a secret. Well done. Um, but you know, uh, my my passion has always been our, our younger people. Uh, you know, I see that lot over there wearing those high vis vests. Those are actually some of my apprentices that came tonight to uh, do the clean-up. Um, but my passion has always been about our, our younger generation and helping them to succeed. Uh, I've been lucky and fortunate enough to work with a great company uh, in Countdown. Um, oh, so many amazing people I, I, I really want to acknowledge, you know, Steve Mills, uh, Brett Ashley, Dave Chambers. Uh, there's so many names. So I'm sorry if I've forgotten all those guys if you're watching. Um, yeah, it's just such a surprise, I, I don't know what to say. Um, had a great night tonight, well done to all you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, this is going to go down as the best thing I've ever done and achieved um, in my life. Uh, if I think about my, my background, I grew up in South Auckland in this beautiful little community called Otara, you might know it, beautiful place. Uh, <laughs> very proud 
of uh, where I come from, my roots. I've never forgotten them, uh, which is why I've always been a, a, a big, um, you know, uh, I've always had a lot of time for young people in South Auckland because I think that they don't get the breaks they deserve. We've got so much talent in South Auckland, whether it's in our industry or, or another, it doesn't matter to me. There is so much wonderful talent out there um, who just need someone to pick them up, guide them, and, and uh, give them a chance. And that's what I love to do, and I love to see them succeed. I've been so lucky to see quite a few of them go on and do great things, and that for me is the reward. That to me is everything uh, I need to know that I've done something for that young person, and, and now they're doing really well, and they're going on to be great people. You know, um, so again, I never forgot my roots. Um, but thank you, everybody. Thank you, Retail Meat Rod, uh, all the ladies of Retail Meat, and everyone else, my Shark Black uh, buddies, uh, teammates. Uh, so looking forward to getting on the stage. It's a pity that uh, uh, COVID um, ruined our, our competition. But hey, we're still here. We're still going. Um, and you know what? The, after tonight, the concept of how this all worked and how it all played out, uh, I thought it, I thought it was wonderful. And I think for you guys, you'll, you, you'll agree, the competitors, there was such or so less stress put on you from uh, previous competitions where you can just focus on doing it. So I think it was great. And I hope we keep this up. I mean, that's just my own opinion. I think it's great. Um, and thank you very much. And to everyone out there, love you. Cheers. Thank you, Rod, and congratulations, Ricky. I'm now going to invite Peter Martin, our head judge, to the stage to come and give his judges' comments and some thank yous. Um, thank you, Michelle. Uh, we'll start with a, a very short list of um, thank yous. Of course, the, the competition that you've been involved in and um, has been observed tonight is the end of a process. Um, that began with a series of regionals throughout New Zealand. So some thank yous um, to the people at those venues. Um, Ray Morrell and the team at Welltech. Um, Rodney Flannery and his team at New World Centre City, which is in um, Dunedin. Stuart Goodall and his team, though um, Stuart probably deserves special mention. He did do a very nice breakfast for us um, at the ARA Institute. Um, Harvey Minhas and his team at Pack and Save Mill Street for hosting us in Hamilton, and Tamai Roth and her team, one of which was here tonight um, at Skills for Work for hosting two days of regionals here in Auckland. We were also um, blessed to have the expertise of some judges to help us at those regionals, so I do need to tonight acknowledge them. Um, Ralph Kuster, Dave Mitchell, Steve Newsom. Um, Brian, and again, thanks for being here um, a second time tonight. Brian Everton, Hannah, Mil Ch Hannah Miller Childs, and Peter Farrelly again doubling up. Thank you again for being here tonight as well, Peter. Just um, a couple of observations from my process. I have had the, the enjoyment of travelling through the country and um, attending all of those regionals, being a judge at them, and probably just an overarching thing that I have said at each of those regionals and I'd like to repeat here tonight for you guys, um, for people watching at home, is we've actually been really lucky to actually even hold this competition this year given the chaos that has um, overtaken our world and there were many adjustments which the competitors will know about and that really fell to one person at one person's feet. Um, so really it is a big thank you to Retail Meet New Zealand for persisting and saying this competition is going to continue. Um, but Michelle, a big thank you from all of the competitors. Um, from my point of view, you've been fabulous the job you've done to make something difficult um, really happen. So thank you, Michelle. Um, just, just a couple of points um, from me in travelling across the country, um, being at the regionals, and you will have seen what I've seen through those regionals in the tables and the work that you've seen from these young people tonight. Overall, my feedback or thoughts 
on the regional competitions leading to this final were I've seen passion, passion for the industry, um, passion from individuals for themselves and the skills they possess. And because of that, that passion shines through and shows you these tables that um, have been produced tonight and are actually what makes judging um, not as much fun because it makes it more difficult to decide winners. Um, Marty uh, Hickey, one of the master butchers, has asked that I just give a personal message tonight. Marty, um, unfortunately, about 45 minutes into the competition tonight, um, had to stop. He um, is actually not particularly well. He was in hospital gowns probably half past five this evening. Um, so he did give it his best shot, but he wanted to say sorry to the other competitors that he couldn't hang in with you and get the job done. And I'm sure we'll see him again. And yeah, lastly, from me, good luck to all of you in the next part of this evening. And congratulations to all of the winners. Um, and yeah, well done. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm now going to welcome Pippa Hawkins, Retail Meat New Zealand General Manager, to announce our new awards this evening. Cool. We are excited to have partnered up with industry organisations to bring a few new awards in 2020. We know a lot of work goes into preparing to compete in these competitions and we would like to further recognise that work by awarding these five new awards. The awards are the Competence Emerging Talent, the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Best Beef Product, the New Zealand Pork Best Pork Product, the Teagle Foods Best Chicken Product, and the Cabernet Foods Cleaners Bones Award. These awards are for the Alto Young Butcher and Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice finalists only, um, and thank you to our sponsors of these awards. We'll start with the Competence Emerging Talent Award, which is being awarded to one of our Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentices, who is showing great promise and has the potential to go far in our industry. The winner of the Emerging Talent Award is... Jaden Seeger from Countdown Central in Dunedin. <laughs> Now onto the Best Product and Cleanest Bones Awards. We had a dedicated judge for these awards, Luca Young of the Hellas Sharp Blacks, was tasked with selecting the most innovative, saleable and cookable products from the finalist display tables. Along with keeping an eye on the competitors' boning skills and checking out how clean their bones were in the waste bins. The winner of the Beef and Lamb New Zealand beef, Best Beef Product is... James Smith from Pakenham Save Pukekohe for his beef, herb, onion roast. <laughs> the winner of the New Zealand pork best pork product is... Brad Gillespie from New World Rotatuna for his pork sausage plat. <laughs> and the winner of the Tegel Foods Best Chicken Product. is Blair Wright from Peter Tim's Meats for his stuffed chicken carvery leg with apricot, apricot and cream cheese. And 
our last award, the winner of the Cabernet Foods Cleaners Bones Award. Is V Ook from Countdown Meat and Seafood. Thank you, Pippa, and well done to our winners this evening. I would now like to welcome John Skur, General Manager of New Zealand Sales from Pure South, to announce the runner up and winner of the Pure South Master Butcher of the Year. The winner of the 2020 Pure South Master Butcher of the Year will win the Pure South Master Butcher of the Year trophy and a whopping $3,500 cash prize. The runner-up receives a generous $1,500 cash prize. And now for the moment you have all been waiting for, over to John to make the announcement. Thanks, Michelle. On behalf of Alliance and the Pure South brand, it's, uh, we're absolutely delighted to be involved with the Master Butcher Awards this year and to recognise the best in the industry. Uh, we are a large exporter, but the New Zealand business is really important to us, and uh, part of that is for us to be able to ensure our, our 5,000 shareholders are able to see their product in their local butcher, the local retail store, or on the menus. And so I want to thank you for what you do in playing that part uh, in our journey for our shareholders. Congratulations to all the finalists tonight and both the, uh, both the awards, and uh, let's get into it. So we'll do the runner-up. So the runner-up of the 2020 Pure South Master Butcher of Competition is... Brendan Kim. Congratulations, Brendan. <laughs> And now the winner of the 2020 Pure South Master Butcher of the Year is... Congratulations, Rob Lees. Congratulations to our winners. I'd now like to welcome Shannon Marshall, Head of Sales Oceana from Ansco Foods to announce the runner-up and winner of the Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice of the Year. Thanks, Michelle. On behalf of Ansco Foods, I'd just like to congratulate all the contestants. I know it's been a long journey for you all to get here, That's so well done. Uh, the, the, the talent showcased in this event continues to improve year on year. And uh, <coughs> Ansco Foods is proud to uh, support Retail Meat New Zealand and this event. On that Thank note. You. Thanks, Shannon. OK, so the winner of the 2020 Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentices of the Year will win a study tour and the Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice of the Year trophy and a Victrinox knife set. The runner-up receives a $500 Prezi card and a knife set kindly donated by Victrinox. Um, so the runner-up of the 2020 Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice is... Vichith Oak. Well done, V. The winner of the 2020 Ansco Foods Butcher Apprentice of the Year is... Blair Wright. Thanks, Shannon, and congratulations to our winners.
I'd now like to welcome Tim Rutt, sales manager from Alto, to announce the runner-up and winner of the Alto Young Butcher of the Year. The winner of the 2020 Alto Young Butcher of the Year will win a study tour, the Alto Young Butcher of the Year trophy, and a Victronox knife set. The runner-up receives a $500 Prezi card and a knife set, again kindly donated by Victronox. Thanks, Michelle. Um, Alto Packaging is proud to again support the industry to find its best in the competition, and we're proud to support the Alto Young Butcher of the Year for 2020. Just walking around the tables, standards I thought were really high and the tables look great, so well done to everyone. I'd like to also thank RMNZ for all the work they do, Pippa, Michelle, the team, you're a pleasure to work with and, and well done despite COVID getting in the way. 2021 is going to be exciting. Uh, we wish all the very best to all of you in the industry. Um, all the con contestants wish them well. We've got some exciting developments happening as well in recyclability and what have you. So we'll see those coming through in due course. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay. So the runner-up of the 2020 Alto Young Butcher of the Year is... Brad Gillespie. And now, our last award. The winner of the 2020 Alto Young Butcher of the Year is... James Smith. Awesome, guys. Um, nah, thanks to, obviously, huge thanks to Retail Meet New Zealand, like what we've covered off earlier. Um, you know, we're lucky enough that we can still do an amazing event like this today. Um, and just look at the setup. It's been, you know, it's been eventful. It's been awesome. Um, a lot of stress on my part. A lot of, it's taken a lot of hard work to get here. A lot of competitions. And um, I'm finally glad to, to take it out. So, nah, cheers, guys. I really appreciate it. So, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> thanks, Jan. Well done, James. Um, so congratulations to all of our winners tonight. For those of you joining us through the live stream, thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to tag us in your posts, NZ Top Butcher and at Retail Meet New Zealand. And take care, and we will see you soon. <laughs>